All right, it looks like we've got six people watching. If you guys can hear me, leave me a one in the chat. Leave me a one in the chat. Good morning, everyone. Leave me a one in the chat. When you come in, don't forget to hit that like button. Oh, we got Tamara Wade in the house. Professor Black Ops is in the house. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Oh, we're going to have some fun with this one. Dr. Diggs is in the house. Joy is in the house. Oh, this is going to be a good one, guys. It's going to be fun today. Yo, we are back on this Saturday morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We having a uh, a nice little coffee talk today. Good, good Saturday, y'all. What is it? What is it? September the eighteenth, and I am uh, I'm excited about the show this morning. And let me guys, let, let me just tell you this. Let me just tell you this. Last week we had a fantastic show with um professor black ops brother gay bay came on we had brother rich came on we also had brother jabron that came on as well too to talk about you know obviously uh uh is is college a scam and i think you guys understand where we were coming from on that situation well also in the comments was dr patrick Dix, and he left us a comment and he said you know what would be a good show, Antoine, is if we talked about, you know, listening to the wrong people will prematurely ruin your life. That's what we're going to be talking about today, guys. We're going to be talking about that simple subject of listening to the wrong people may potentially ruin your life. So that's the subject of today's show. But before there, I wanted to do some housekeeping, guys. Make sure you hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, uh, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And I must say this. Thank you so much for all your support. This channel is growing and we're having fun, guys. We're having fun. So, you know, for the new folks, you guys aren't really familiar with who I am. I'm Antoine Wade, founder and CEO of Black Heights, where we help you to advance in your career by training, coaching and mentorship. Uh, and just talking about ways that you can have success in your life. And I specifically focus in the IT sector because that's the area that I've risen through and, you know, obviously been able to uh, acquire a lot of things in my life. And I love to share this information with uh, you all, right, to to, to be a, a resource and to be a person that uh, is not just living it on my own, but actually guiding the way and leading people as well towards 
uh, a level of success that they can achieve in life. With that being said, I, I must say this, I take on a lot of coaching clients and the majority of my coaching clients are men. And I got to say this, they are absolutely fantastic and absolutely professional. There's been maybe a hand, not even a handful, maybe a one finger, one or two fingers out of dozens of, of individuals that I've coached throughout my uh, coaching journey and throughout the IT sector that I must say that came across as unprofessional. So you guys may have, um, what do you call it? You guys may have seen the community post that I shared yesterday, and I'm going to bring that up real fast because I want to use this as an example of something uh, that we talk about quite often on this channel, and that is soft skills, right? We talk about hard skills as well, but we also talk about soft skills. Miss Wade, thank you so much for the coffee. My wife just brought me coffee, so this is going to help me uh, 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 get the frog from out of my throat, guys. Check that out. Check that mug out. This is me and my daughter. Me and a daughter on the boat, right? One of my favorite mugs. I think I drink out this mug just about every single morning. If not, this one is another one. But um, I love I love this mug because it has a fantastic title on it, and it's called World's Best Dad. World's Best Dad. That's what I try to be every single day outside of uh, being a fantastic husband and a fantastic citizen, right? So um, I'm going to show you guys uh, something. Let me get my screen up uh, because I want to make sure that we aren't making these same mistakes. And a lot of people that follow this channel are folks who are from 18 to 24. They're just coming into it in college and so forth. That's the majority of people that actually follow the channel. They're very early on within their careers and so forth because I talk about management information systems, a major that I think is absolute fantastic computer science and so forth. But we have to remind uh, some of the younger folks and some of the older folks as well, too, uh, that there's etiquette to uh, things in life and there's procedures that you have to go through in order for you to achieve anything within your life. So I'm going to do something real fast. I'm going to put that over here. Tamara Wade is in the house. Black Hops is in the house. Joey Q is in the house. Tyrese is in the house. Tamara said, great topic. Tango Ray is in the house. Good morning, everyone. Tiffany Wade, good morning, everyone. Um, let me do this. Let me share my screen real fast, guys. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you guys something. So yesterday was interesting because I was pretty busy doing a, um, a, a guest speaking on a virtual event, and I was quite busy. You guys can see my screen, right? Yes, it looks like you guys can see my screen. So I'm watching over here I'm, while I'm also navigating over here. So um, I think for the majority of people that come to this channel, that has questions, you guys ask it in the comment section of this uh, uh, of, of this channel, right? And it's about, hey, do you think this major is great? Uh, what kind of careers that I do and so forth? And a lot of people have questions around management information systems and all of the careers that I review on this channel are specifically uh, 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 careers for management information systems majors. That's why I actually made them that way, right? So that you can have a full catalog into the different types of careers that you can actually go into in order for you to uh, find one that you may enjoy if you are a management information systems major, information systems, computer science, all that stuff. They are all around the same type of careers and you can go down the same sort of career paths. Uh, and people ask a lot of questions on those videos. And I must say, I must get a hundred or so questions in a typical week and I answer just about all of them. I would say probably about 98% of them. So if you guys look at my 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 about section, right? It's about, you know, Black Heights and what we do. We we, we offer educational uh, uh, content and we post two times a week. I don't know if this schedule is up to date, but if I need to update it, I'll update it. I think I post more than two times a week now, especially with the live shows uh, that we actually do as well too. And I gotta say this, Professor Black Ops, man, thank you so much for that show we did earlier this week. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, my brother actually got a chance to watch that show and he is very interested into cybersecurity. Um, so I, 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 I appreciate you being able to give us the game, my man, and to help us with, uh, uh, understanding a little bit more about cybersecurity. So anyway, uh, I am also a career coach. That's one thing I am. I'm a career coach 
and I coach individuals. That's what we do. You guys have seen the website, right? If I jump up to my website, uh, you guys can see it over here, BLK. And if you ever, ever need any sort of career consultations, mentorship, you can just go to our website and you can book a session, right? It tells you everything about us, who we are as a person and so forth. And one of the things that we do is we offer a career empowerment consultation. So you can get any answers or you can get anything off your chest with a professional who has done it in the game. And I offer it at a price that is reasonable, $29 for 30 minutes, right? And so forth, right? So we want, we want to make sure that we offer our services to individuals so that they can actually uh, leverage them. And if you really want to go into a full coaching session, here's our pricing and our offering as well too. And Professor Black Ops, he's always the, the one that sends people my way as well too, but reasonable prices, right? So anyway, let me jump back over to, to this. Yesterday, yesterday, I got an email from an individual, right? I got an email from an individual by the name of Jay DeWalt, Mr. John DeWalt. It was a, a, a interesting email. And I'll let you guys read it, right? And he basically says, you know, hi, my name is John, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, he has two degrees, sports management and so forth. And um, he just wants to, you know, uh, uh, get some recommendation. Fine email. But one of the things I would say is, is this, guys, is when you're sending anybody a email um, one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure you have a subject on it, right? That's number one email etiquette. You want to have a subject on it. As you can see, this doesn't have a subject on it. And this gentleman, you know, I don't know him from uh, Nick down the street, uh, uh, says he has, you know, two degrees. So he must be a professional brother. And we're going to keep it that way, right? But when you are trying to get somebody's attention and you want to work with somebody or you need some help or you want a question answered and you're shooting somebody an email, if you don't know that person, you probably want to add a subject to the subject section of the email. And there is not one here, guys. There's not one here. And there's a question, right? And he has questions. And, and, and if you can see, it's, it's one, two, three questions in here. So questions take a little bit of time to answer when you get a chance to, and especially when you're you're a busy man like myself, right? I'm a corporate man as well as I run Black Heights. I have a YouTube channel. I have a husband. I'm a husband. I'm a, a a father to kids, right? And so, so I'm after the event is over, I get this ping on one of my videos, guys, and I'll let you read this as well too because it was a the video that I did on yesterday uh, about the uh, management information systems being the uh, best major out there because I really do specifically think it's the best major out there. And, and, and the gentleman, the gentleman, uh, uh, says this in, 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 in the, the email or, or, or on the channel. Uh, let me pause this cause you guys can hear this. You don't need to hear that. Let me, let me pause that. So it says, yo, bro, you lose mad cool points. You give this information. And then if someone sends you an email in order for you to give an answer, or in order for you to give an answer, a question, they have to donate to you or your cash out. You claim to be a millionaire. You claim to be helping people, but you was you just grifting with the information, bro. If you are a millionaire, you will be willing to shed some light. You should allow people to follow up and ask questions specifically if you got your email attached to your contact information. Oh, so, so as you guys can know, uh, 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 Mr. Way says, oh, this is just chaos. So what I basically did is on my community forum, I just said, guys, first of all, when you're reaching out to somebody, use the correct etiquette, right? And then if you don't get a response back right away, right, you, you, you try again, you follow up and so forth. So you guys saw the email. Well, needless to say, if you guys go to my email, I'll let you guys see this as well. Oh, my brother pocket watching JT sent me an email. Uh, yesterday for an interview request. I'm going to jump on his channel as well sometime this week. I got to give him uh, 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 some time. I, 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 I love the brother and his content and so forth. But he sent me an email for an interview, right? Subject on it. Perfect thing, right? Okay. Jerry DeWalt doesn't have a subject on it. But if you notice on my emails, I have a vacation setting on because I get bombarded with a lot of emails. You look at this one, advertising proposals, uh, 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 YouTube corporation, all this stuff that's coming to your emails that is bunch of information that a lot of times you got to filter and you don't have time when you have so many things going on in life. So of course, 
you know, if you look at my email, I have auto reply. So anybody sends me an email to support Black Heights, there's an auto reply. You know what my auto reply says? This is what went to Mr. Uh, Jay DeWalt yesterday. This is an auto reply. Due to high volume of emails, I only have time to reply to Patreon members, which is reasonable, right? To join the inner circle over at my Patreon, just join the Patreon. And if you want to donate over here, right, you can just donate if you want or cash out. That's for all the people who support this channel and appreciate the knowledge that I'm sharing with them and so forth, right? And typically what ends up happening, though, is this. I get the email. I may sit on it for 24 hours or 48 hours and I reply. Right. So although this is an auto reply, this is just a setting expectations that, guys, I don't have time a lot of the time to respond to every single email that comes up. But for you all who've emailed me, you have gotten responses. You have gotten responses, And that's for anybody. So you look at Professor or, 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 or Pocket Washing JT's auto response. He's asking me for an interview. And I say the same thing due to the high volume in emails. Right. And, and, and anybody else, an advertising proposal. This is an auto reply due to the high volume email. So it's the same canned messages that goes to anyone who's asking a question on my site, right? So here's the thing, right? I, he, he, here's the thing. So this gentleman, you know, decided that he wanted to uh, continue on down the rabbit hole. And, and one of the things that I just said, you know, is this, I say this all the time. You have to be a professional. And I gave him an opportunity to, really like backtrack on that one, right? Because that was really ignorant of, of somebody to accuse, you know, somebody who gives game and I give game for uh, uh, in knowledge and I share my experiences, personal experiences, because I have the experiences and I don't have anything to, uh, uh, to withhold. And I only talk about things that I've ever done in my life. Uh, uh, I share that with others, but I give a lot of time to people for free. And I gave him an opportunity to kind of backtrack what he was saying, right? I don't claim to be a millionaire. I don't walk around telling people I'm a millionaire. But unfortunately, on YouTube, you have to use hooks. And if you have that label of being a millionaire, why not use it to your benefit? That's what I do. That's why I say that in my videos, guys. And I'm a millionaire. <laughs> so what? And I don't walk around meeting people, hey, I'm a millionaire. No, that's not how it works. But the point of it is when you grab people's intention, these are some of the things that the, the the marketing tips that you learned how to use on YouTube. That's why I add into my video. So I don't claim to be anything. But anyway, so long story short, this gentleman thinks that I am a, a grifter. And I had to really look up what that term actually meant. Uh, but uh, 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 eventually what it means is someone who uh, solicits uh, people uh, to give them dollars for information. And I would say, then yes, I am. Because you know why? We are a capitalistic market. And if you want information, you sometimes you got to pay when people don't have time, right? That's just what it is. That's the nature of the beast. That's the society that we live in. And then he goes on all down the line to say, millionaires don't give or don't charge people for information. And I'm just like, what world does this guy live in? What world does this guy live in? Right. There's people who give information for free all the time. I do that nonstop. But if you think about it, here's the thing. Here's the thing that really uh, uh, got under my skin yesterday. And this is this is going to be the last one. So this gentleman has already uh, uh, what do you call it? He's already uh, answer or, or send questions in on videos. And I'll and I'll show you guys. Right. Uh, uh, this gentleman even checked out all my information on my views on my channel. He sent it two weeks ago. On the video that I did for business analysts. Hey, what's going on, Antoine? Listen, I've been watching several of your videos and I noticed that you say you need an undergrad degree, yada, yada, yada. Got back to him. Same day, right? Same day. But you have people who are entitled, people who are entitled to get information back without paying, people who are entitled for, and, and this is a, a, a professional, by the way. I looked him up and, and, and Googled him, right? I looked him up and, and Google him. He has a LinkedIn and so forth. And this is a professional who's teaching kids. So people with that sort of mindset, um, you got to be careful with. You have to really be careful with. And the reason why I say that is because that's the point of this video today, guys. Listening to the wrong person, listening to the wrong person, uh, it can really, really, really get a chance to ruin your life. Because if you think about it, this gentleman went out there. And, and starts telling people that, hey, Black Heights is this, Black Heights is that. 
uh, you can miss out on your personal opportunities like he just missed out on his personal opportunities so because I won't respond to a, an email from him ever again, right? And more than likely, I'm going to block him from this channel, right? So guys, be professional when you are reaching out to people. This is a learning lesson that I have for all of you, specifically for the younger guys, right? If you want something and you want people's time, you have to respect people's time. And when you reach out to people, especially with email, you have to use the proper email etiquette. I don't care about what you're saying inside the email. Although if you don't know me, you don't use you know all that crappy bro words and all this other stuff, you don't know me because for some people, they may not like that, right? I don't much care about that piece of it, but I do require you to have a subject to understand what you're trying to get to. And you know, just be respectful of people's time. That's That's all I'm saying. Be respectful of people's time. And of course, you had a lot of people who responded to it yesterday and uh, and, and supported and supported supported me. And I, I appreciate that, guys. So with that being said, guys, I wanted to open this up. And this is going to be a conversation for for many people to come in and to have a conversation about them getting some bad advice in their lives. Right. And listening to the wrong people. There's people out there like Bandman Kivo, right? Good dude, good hip hop artist, but he's telling people that they shouldn't be going to college or uh, college is a scam, right? That is that is something that is um, pretty false information. No, you know, if 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 if, if his views is that, I, I don't know where it's coming from because I don't think the brother ever went to college. But he's saying college is a scam. And when you hear people say things like that, listening to the wrong people will prematurely ruin your life. Just think about all the people that thinks that college is a scam and haven't ever experienced college. Oh, that coffee is good. Miss Wade, thank you so much for having this wonderful coffee this morning. Um, let me do this. Let me, let me, let me shout out the chats, man. Let me, let me go into the chat real fast before we jump into it. Bill... Bill Bando says, man said, you got to pay before you say. <laughs> hey, man, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you look at my YouTube channel and you ask any questions, you get a response, right? And you, if you send an email to me, you ask any questions, you get a response. And if I don't get to it, then you got to pay, right? If you want to book a session, you have long winded questions, three questions in an email, man, that's worth isn't that worth an investment on, to, on yourself? Isn't that worth investing into yourself? If you want information, invest in yourself to get that information. Tangeray Janetana says, got to be respectful of other people's time. Instant response should not be expected. Give the man 24 to 48 hours. Ooh, you're right. You know what? I might have to have an SLA, uh, 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 a SLA uh, written up on, on my responses. I didn't think that. Uh, it would ever come to that. But some people specifically, this is a gentleman, right? A gentleman, a, 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 one of our brothers, a specific gentleman that um, uh, 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 thinks that, you know, obviously there should be an SLA there. And when I'm, you know, I'm the one that's doing this. Joey Q says free advice gets free level of attention. And you know what? That's 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 so true. That's so true. You got to prioritize you got to prioritize and free advice gets free level of attention. You're absolutely right, my brother. Tamara Wade say facts. Uh, 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 Tam, yes, that's absolutely facts. And that's 100. So, guys, um, we're going to be talking about different things and different. Uh, what we're going to be talking about here is this. And I'm going to bring some some folks on to the on the to the panel to give you guys a game. But I'm going to kick this one off with this. I've listened to people in my life, specifically going into my sophomore year of high school or in my sophomore year of high school. Uh, I think I've shared this story with you guys multiple times before, but, but going into my high school year or my sophomore year of high school, guys, I was living in Orangeburg, South Carolina and uh, the town is a predominantly African American city, and so forth. And uh, uh, I was a uh, a pretty intelligent guy, a guy who was always, you know, in the books and so forth. And uh, my sophomore year, I started hanging around, you know, seniors and so forth because 
Uh, I had them in my classes and so forth. And I end up, long story short, missing about 27 days out of class. Okay. 27 days out of class. Um, this is an example of listening to the wrong people. And this can potentially prematurely ruin your life. Uh, missing 27 days out of class. Uh, caused me to get uh, C's, D's, and even an F out of a class, right? Dropped my GPA from like a 3.8 to about uh, a 1.9 uh, for one semester and then a, a 2.3 or something like that for another semester. Uh, on a bad path, on a bad path specifically because I decided that I wanted to be the cool guy. The cool guy uh, was the guy who uh, at the time uh, in our culture, was the guy who was a class clown or either an athlete, uh, really wasn't the smart guy, wasn't the guy who, um, you know, was 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 a nerdy and intelligent like it is in many other cultures. And, 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 and that wasn't the case. So I tried to be that cool guy and really lost myself. Let me make certain I say that again. I tried to be that cool guy and really lost who I was as a person. I got an opportunity to redeem myself because my mother did something that was absolutely fantastic, which was to move us to uh, another city. She took on another job in Wisconsin and so forth. And I got a chance to uh, uh, really start over fresh into a new school, a different environment where I got an opportunity to see that being a smart guy, being an athlete was what got you the nice women and also got you a lot of praise and so forth in, in, in other cultures, right? In the majority of cultures, our culture, a lot of times seems to be a bit backwards right now. And I'll, and I'll say that loosely because things are starting to change uh, uh, quite a bit, but during those days, uh, that's how it was. That's how I interpreted it. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I got an opportunity to change and I saw how uh, uh, other cultures did it. And it was something that allowed for me to experience it myself and to be able to share my experiences with others as they go through life as well, too. And to uh, if they're going through some challenges similar to what I've experienced, right, they can uh, leverage my knowledge to really avoid those types of situations. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to drop the link into the chat uh, for uh, for folks to come on, specifically uh, Dr. D, uh, to come on and give us the game on, you know, situations that he's encountered within his life and to really talk about this because it's 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 important. It's big, guys. It's really important and it's big and it's causing people to go in other directions, listening to the wrong people. And I'll share just another story with you all as well, too, outside of the one that I just shared with you guys, right? Um, I'm going to put myself on pause real fast because I, I'm getting a little bit of a tickle in my throat. I'm going, to, I'm going to mute my. All right, that's better. So links in the chat if you want to come on, share your story about your experiences listening to people and potentially it ruining your life. I want to hear about it. You know, typically we talk about things in tech and so forth. Right. But this could be tech. This could be personal life. This can be relationships. I want to hear about it. this is this is game from 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 gents who have a lot of experience in life. And I can say this relate to work. Right. Uh, I had a, a a manager at one point in time that said to me, you know, hey, Antoine, um, there's no reason for you to go over to become a manager at a, uh, a division within our, our company, being very, very selfish, right? And um, he basically said that if, if, if I become, you know, a manager in this organization, right, I would be, uh, 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 I would be basically ruining my career, right? And, and I must say this, ever since I became a manager in that organization, I've ladder climbed ever since, right? So listening to people can potentially ruin your career, and I want you guys to avoid that. I really want you guys to avoid that. So let me bring in Dr. D into the screen. Give me one second. Let me make sure that I got this correct way. And 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 brother, <laughs> Dix, man, Dr. Patrick Dix, how you doing this morning, my man? I'm doing good. You know, um, 
I got about 15 minutes where I got to head out. My appointment's at 11. Um, you told me that. You told me that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I I, I want you to come on and let's <laughs> and, 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 and let it hang out. You were the one who was the inspiration behind this topic uh, um, based on a comment that you said. And I want you to really get it off your chest and what you thought about when when you saw that video and you saw that live stream and got a chance to catch it. And, and, and why did you put that comment out there? Go ahead and share it with us, brother. Um, we talked about this several times um, when I've been on the Hall of Game with O'Shea and when you've been on it with us too, Antoine. And um, education is very valuable. Education is not a scam. I can completely tell you um, I would not have the opportunities I have now if I did not have an education. Mm -hmm. um, the amounts of money, the amounts of experience I've been able to gain is because of having a college degree. And um, we need to stop listening to people that have never been to college. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things is you're going to find out in this lifetime, there are a lot of people that see you going down a good path, see you going up towards a good path and want to derail you. And you mm -hmm. have to remember those people don't want to see you become more successful than them. And many of the people giving you this advice, if you ask them, where did you go to school at? And I'm going to be honest and just say this. Um, I know it may offend people, but if your degree is not in STEM or you're going to school to be a lawyer or have a blue collar trade, you really don't really have any two cents to put into anything. Just going to mm. call it what it is because STEM going to be a lawyer, you know, you call your accountants, anything to where you're critically and analytically thinking about stuff is very tough to obtain. I remember going to South Carolina State. I remember not being there with a party. I could care less about that anyway because I went to two technical schools before that. And to give you a little insight, uh, insight 1999 the high school I went to is about 45 minutes away from Orangeburg and I had a math teacher a black math teacher um I am six foot two at that time I was about 180 pounds and I wear like a size 13 shoe mm -hmm. the math teacher this is the year my team was blowing everybody out going towards the state championship and the black math teacher I think we were in calculus or algebra it might be was geometry and he put me out on Front Street and said, how are you feeling my class, Mr. Dix? And you sit in the bench. I mm. went home and told my parents that my parents went right up to the school and had a nice little conversation with him. Long story short, his daughter got pregnant by one of the dudes on the football team that did not even graduate high school. Mm. And yes. And, um, <laughs> oh, gosh. And, um, I see this guy till to this day. I am the same age. Antoine and I are in the same age group. I have more education than him. I know I make more money than him. And this goes to show all of the younger guys, high school is not the um, permanent state that your life will be in. Mm. I personally, as a, as a young black man, I did not take high school serious. I graduated mm. at the bottom of the class. But one of the things is I can tell everybody, no matter what race you are listening to this, um, just get your high school diploma. Life starts after that. You're going to find out nothing you do in high school is going to prepare you for the real world. Mm. Life starts to happen after about 18 years old. My dad died in 2003. I graduated high school in 2002. My dad grad died. I was 19 years old and nothing. You know, one of the big things is about life. Your parents are going to prepare you more for life than school. Uh, many of the lessons that people are learning now, I knew about them when I was younger. When I was younger, I was born in '84, so you're talking about eight, 89, 1990. My dad had an auto had an auto and paint and body shop, auto paint and body shop, because my dad got drafted to the Vietnam War. He came out, um, he started teaching auto paint and body in a small rural town, and he took my brother and I down there with us with him every Saturday morning. And I remember getting paid five dollars to push the broom on the floor. Me and my brother and I are five years apart. My brother got ten dollars. So mm. my dad was teaching us at a young age, you have to be responsible. There is accountability. They yeah. gave my both of my parents gave us life lessons and my sister, too. They gave all three of us life lessons. So taking many of the things people told me I knew were already false because I already had two people living in a household with them until they both passed, told me about yeah. life. Even to this day, both of my parents are deceased. It is amazing. I tell I was talking to my siblings or talking to somebody. I said, it is amazing what our parents were telling us is coming to truth, coming to fruition today. 
Mm. I remember in the year 2000, this guy had an R1 Yamaha motorcycle. I went to his house and never rode a motorcycle. Um, this is how I learned that motorcycles are expensive. Yes. And I drove the bike on a motorcycle. If anybody knows, if you grab the front brake, it's going to lock up. And, you know, if you watch the Rough Rider videos, when they have the bikes tilting up in the air, that's the main way they do it. Yep. So I panic and grabbed the bike and it fell down, the fairing and the oil pan and everything. The first words came out the guy's mouth was, you're going to, my parents are going to call your, no, my mom is going to call your mom. They sent my parents a bill for $1,400 from the motorcycle. Wow. <laughs> my mom, my, this is like, my mom and dad told me, but specifically my mom, my mom said, for the way those people did you with that bike, I give you less than, I'll give them a less than a year. They won't have that motorcycle. Lo and behold, mm -hmm. somebody stole it. And this is to play into taking the wrong advice because if you don't have people, I saw a lot of things growing up. I didn't have a bad childhood, but just taking the advice. Um, somebody even, I think when I was younger, say, you don't need to get a doctorate degree. I can get what I want. Even at 37 years old now, I don't take advice from too many people because I look at the way my life needs to go. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, if you've seen the movie, remember the Titans. I was telling this quote to somebody else. Denzel Great Washington. Movie, by the way. Yep. Say again. That's a great movie, by the way. Yeah, it, it is a great movie when you look at the holistic picture. Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington, I think it's Bill Paxton, are coming down the stairs. And J Denzel Washington says to him, he says, I've never seen an assistant coach's name in the paper for losing the football game. That translates to I've never seen the person that is giving me the advice taking the loss. So in other mm. words, prepare yourself to where when you take these L's, they're on you. You're going to lose in life. You're going to lose. Women are going to walk away from you. Women have done it to me. Um, don't let people make you feel bad for making a decision. I pray about things. I think about it. I'll go ride. Like last night, I went and rode to Columbia. I do my best thinking when I am riding and I'll go eat. But that builds up to making the best choices for my life and even going to school to South Carolina State. I went to two technical schools. Tell, I tell all young brothers, anybody listening, it does not matter to where you start is where you finish. Um, mm. This thing about the I can think about the last 20 years of my life since 2001. I remember when a 9-11 attacks happened. I was in I was a high school senior. And I remember when that happened last Saturday. I said, I look at my life in 20 years. Do you know there are people still stuck making ten dollars an hour um, at wherever they're working at? Starbucks and baristas. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a it's it's a progression. Damn! It's a progression in life, and from going to school, from getting fired, that's how I found O'Shea to do Jackson. I got fired from my first two jobs out of college. Excuse me, I was a computer programmer doing SAP and SQL. Never heard heard of SAP, but um, I remember doing SQL when I was in college, and that was my first job. I got fired from it. I got fired from an internship. The guy pretty much told me don't come back. That was mm. in 2010. And that was 10 years ago. I look at how my life has changed in the last 10 years. So this is a premise to say, fellas, do, fellas or females, whoever, whoever's listening to it. Um, don't let people tell you because somebody could have said, oh, you're going to be a bum. You got fired. I look at that now and laugh and say, I'm glad I got fired. I would not be where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. fail every day at doing things. Um, that's one of the biggest things you need to learn going into the tech field. There are going to be people smarter than you. They're going to be people brighter than you. But do not be afraid to fail. Um, I apply for jobs at times I know I'm not qualified for. Even if they don't mm -hmm. call me back, I go for it. Um, all they could say is no. That's my. That's the way I live my life. All people could say is no, and I keep it moving. And I just look at life differently. I look at Antoine. I look at what they make. When we hear Kevin Samuels talk, when O'Shea talk, it motivates me to say, I got to keep pushing forward to continue to see what they're doing to make myself better. It inspires you to say, man, you know, I, I'm tired, but I hear about what they're doing. Let me continue to push forward. Let me continue to push forward. And yeah. somebody will say, you taking that advice from Oh, you know, you're taking advice from the wrong people. If you take advice from people to where you want to be, if you want to have a good marriage, you will listen to Antoine. You don't listen to me. I'm not married. I can't tell you about marriage. <laughs> That's the big mistake. A lot of people. Antoine's married. 
Yes, that's true. You that's, you, you're absolutely right about that. You're absolutely right about that, Dr. J. I, I, a lot of people give advice on things that they're not qualified to give advice on. You're absolutely right. Hit on that some more, man. Um, if I want to, if you want to learn how to go to school to be a professor, you could talk to me. If you want to learn how to be a medical doctor, you can contact O'Shea because O'Shea just graduated from medical school. Mm-hmm. If you want to talk about tech, you could talk to Antoine, Gabe, a, myself, um, Keep It Techie, some of the other guys on the panel that we have. Um, if you want to talk about relationship stuff, you will seek out Kevin Samuels. And I think mm-hmm. Kevin Samuels has a STEM background. So you will reach out to different people. Look at people to where you want to go. And those are the people that I recommend that you talk to. Um, I personally, I don't have children yet, so I can't give you advice on how to raise a kid. But I can tell you, if you don't raise your child, your child correctly, when they get to me in college and they don't have the basic skill set. Now, I can tell you what degree or what um, kind of thought process it takes to be successful in any kind of degree. But. It's, it's, you know, the same thought, the same thought, the same work and thought process to be successful in STEM would apply to accounting, would apply to blue collar agriculture. It's all about work ethic. And a lot of young men don't understand that you like you were saying earlier, everybody wants to be the man. You need to become a man first before you try to become the man. Mm. But people respect that more. The older you get, um, the older you get, the more things should come clear. You should not be thinking the same way at 19. I'm 37. The same way I thought at 19, if I'm thinking the same way at 19 at 37, we have a loss. You have mm-hmm. lost. Even when I go on Erica's channel, people will write comments. Erica Williams has given you guys great advice. And people, you know, want to counteract it by coming up with arguments. And, you know, that's pretty much all I have to say. You know, it's just... um. It's a tough world, but do not take the wrong advice on the wrong people. I don't know how many people that guy affected by telling them college isn't valuable, but we are young men. Like you were saying earlier, athletics is not going to take you far in life. You can sit here and argue with me, but it took somebody with a biomedical engineering background or medical doctors to allow LeBron James them to play in the bubble last year. I want you to think about that. People with a college degree had to allow them to play basketball. No matter how much money they had, they could not play basketball last year unless a person with a background in research or a medical doctor cleared them. Those do- those uh, players, like you look at Dak Prescott for the Cowboys, he could not play football anymore unless, I think, I don't know if it's orthopedic, I don't know the type of doctor that fixes yeah, your ankles, but yep. Yep. Um, a doctor had to reconstruct his ankle People is the facts are all in front of you. You you can't a woman can't deliver a baby unless she has a gynecologist. A, a, mm, I mean, mm. people is perfect. Well, how? Please tell me how you're gonna get around it. And that's pretty much all I had to say on that. Mm, 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 mm. No, I, I I I love it, Doctor. You you hit on a a, a a a a quite a bit of things right there, man. And 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 absolutely, you're right, right. Like when I think about. Uh, uh, certain points that I picked up on is, is, is this, right. Is, you know, take advice from people. That's the thing, right? Nobody's going to be the perfect person that you should listen to in life or tech or anything like that. Right. From a tech field, like you said, me, professor black ops, Gabe, yourself, all of us have some sort of specialty within tech. We all don't have it all. Take the pieces that we have leverage it and then seek out advice from other people right mm-hmm. if it's about relationships even even brother kevin samuels right i'm mean, like he he talks about relationships all the time and he's a relationship guru but there's other people who have successful relationships if you want to have a happy marriage that you can talk to about it within your life and get some gain or matter of fact i say this all the time when it comes down to relationships if you want to understand how a relationship works especially marriage go and hang out with people who are been together for 30 40 years and, and, and listen to their stories, right? Mm-hmm. And and try to uh, uh, develop a relationship with them and have them open up to you about relationships and marriage, right? You get a chance to see it yourself because as a person, as people, humans, uh, we, we connect with what we actually see in the behaviors of others. That's how we really, really learn, right? And if you see the behaviors of others, in a relationship a certain way, you're more than likely going to adapt that sort of behavior within your relationship. No different than if you're a parent and your kids see your behavior as a person, as a parent, right? They're going to pick up that behavior. It has nothing to do with a lot of times on what you say. It's really how you behave, how you act and so forth. 
And um, yeah, I, it, I, I think that's so, so true, my man. I really appreciate you coming on here and, and, and talking about that, right? Because but I think the biggest thing that inspired that was just the fact of the matter is you got people who haven't gone to college saying that college is a scam. That's a terrible, that's terrible advice to be listening to. You have no idea what you're talking about, right? And um, and, and at the end of the day, some people do listen to that and did because that, that video has over 280,000 views. So it's impacted somebody who, you know, yep. is a big follower, a loyal follower of that person. Yep. And uh, I'm going to say this. I see a comment. That's a weak argument. Who gets paid more? See, in our community, we don't think about long term in life. Mm. You think mm. about right now. That's why a lot of y'all are going to fail, calling it what it is. You're thinking about, oh, well, this is cool right now. What about five to 10 years from now? You know, one of my one of the things I, I talk to people about is automation. They are getting rid of jobs. Many of y'all are not going to many, many of you, many of the listeners, unless you prepare, you're not going to have a job in the next five to 10 years permanently. There's going to mm. be O'Shea mentioned this years ago. There's going to be a permanent underclass in America. And all of these videos and all of the advice we're we're giving to people. You need to try to get ahead of this. I said the world is changing. What are mm. you going to do to change with it? It's going to come down to two types of groups, people that have it and people that don't. And if you're not able to get in one of those groups, you are going to be in poverty. And you're talking about Social Security and disability. They're using up all the money now for that right now. So Mm -hmm. what you know, please, you have to come with a stronger argument. That's the mindset Mm -hmm. now that has our community ruined. Mm -hmm. Who gets paid Mm -hmm. more? That's for right now. Oh my bad. Yeah. They may be worth they may be worth a hundred million dollars, but they have broke their ankle. Who's going to operate on a hundred million dollar athlete? Mm. 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 Who's sure. going to operate if they have cancer? Who's going to operate on them if they tore their ACL? Hmm. Without that mm. guy that makes less than that more than uh, without the guy that makes less than the athlete, the athlete can't get on the floor. That's true. That's true. Mm. That's, that's so, it, it's it's. It's absolutely true. It, I, I I agree with you, right? It, it's it's you know I think a lot of the times you know like 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 Kane mentioned, uh, uh, who gets paid more, right? Like I, I, the long term is they, people don't understand long term. They don't understand long term at all, right? Nope. And and that's the issue. But let, let me do this. Let me get the Tango Rage and Tonic, who's always a big supporter. I appreciate you, Tango Rage and Tonic, for the super chat. Don't walk away from negative, folks. Run. Let me hear it again. <laughs> Run! Keep it pushing forward. That's what it is. Because negative people, you're absolutely right, Tanya. Right? Um, negative people in general, you have to get away from those kind of people, right? You have to get away from people who, who talk out of about things that they have no idea about, who haven't lived those experiences. And you can, and this is the thing, you can get receipts from people, and that's why all the time I like to share receipts. I don't mind. I don't mind, you know, you know, sharing receipts and opening my life up and saying, guys. I'm a millionaire or guys, I have real estate or guys, I make X amount of money. I don't mind doing it because I have the receipts into to back it up and credentials to do it as well. I have the degrees. I have all this stuff. stuff. I have the family. I don't mind showing receipts. If you are listening to people and they haven't seen receipts yet, guys, you probably want to start to peel that back, man. And that's uh-huh. just, that's that's important because people say stuff all the time. They they, they people are salesmen and they'll they'll sell you something and have you going down a path and haven't had that experience yep. in their life. At, yep. at all so get receipts so, guys get receipts yep so i'm gonna say i i appreciate and allow i appreciate you allowing me to come on i know it was a little rush but yeah if i people need i have my receipts just like antoine was saying you know you could check my credentials and my background you can connect with me on linkedin if you need to but um what i'm telling you is reality i teach the classes i've taught over fifteen thousand students and you are in for a rude awakening in this world without any kind of credentials i am straight mm-hmm. up telling you so please mm. prepare yourself. Mm, I appreciate you, Dr. Dr. Patrick Dix, man. Thank you so much for coming on from the, yeah. from the lovely South Carolina, man. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you blessing us this morning with your game and, 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 and really being the inspiration behind this topic this morning as a, as a coffee talk. Miss Wade, if you get a chance, can you just help me get a refill of coffee, Professor, <laughs> Professor Dix? Uh, 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 we'll see you next time, my man. All right, we'll Antoine, time, thank brother. you again. All right. Absolutely. See you, brother. All right. So, guys, I mean, like, that's that's what it is. Right. You know, uh, 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 I, I say this. I say this all the time. Right. Like uh, you, you have to you have to really, really 
And, and well, let me go to Brother Jabron's comment. He says something that's very important here. Some folks go out of their way to present the exception as the rule. And a lot of people do that often. A lot of people use the exception as the rule the majority of the time. Oh, well, this person did it. Okay, give me a give me a time, right? You, 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 you especially when it comes down to relationships, right? Uh, give me an opportunity to uh, 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 the, the share something with you. And I, I hear it all the time with uh, Kevin Samuels, if you ever watch his show, or, or Osei Duke Jackson interviews and so forth. When you're talking to people a lot of times about relationships or, or people that are a certain way, they always give the exception. The, the exception is somebody uh, who is a celebrity a lot of the times, right? And it's not anybody in their personal life that have personal experience with, hey, who is this person? Oh, well, they named some celebrity. And it's because that's an exception. And they use the exception as a rule a lot of times. So I really appreciate your comment on here, uh, 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 Jabron. Uh, brother Jabron is always coming through blessing us with it. We got, we got, oh, my, my, my brother, my brother, uh, 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 Professor Black Ops, man. I, 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 I'm glad that you came on to the show today. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, look at that. Miss Wade just bought me some additional coffee. Thank you, sweetie. Check this out. Now I got a, another mug over here with my, uh, my nephews on it. Check that out. Cute boys right there. And and, and 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 Professor Black Ops, you inspired my brother. You are inspired my brother to go down to the cybersecurity space, man. But let me let me get to you. How are you doing this morning, man? I'm doing great, man. Just trying to wake up and get motivated. Was working on a video and then saw you popped up, and I really enjoyed our <laughs> chat. Like I said, thanks for sharing your platform. Me and my 613 subscribers trying to build it up. <laughs> yes, yes. So guys, guys, if you're new to this, if you're new to this, if you're watching this on replay, or if you are watching us for the first time today and or if you're watching us like you're a normal person a normal subscriber to this channel guys go over to professor black ops youtube channel an absolutely wonderful content creator in the cybersecurity space go ahead and hit that subscribe button let's bring in the support that's going to continue to have another individual like that who has a great platform to build it up to give you guys a game on and cybersecurity uh, and, and information technology. Guys, a fantastic content creator. And uh, he's always here to share his experience as well. Too. What you got for us, Professor Black Ops today, man? What you want to contribute to this conversation today, my man? Uh, following a doctor, I think that's some of the bad advice. The guy told me don't get a doctorate, and I didn't get it. And sometimes I look back at it. I don't think it hurt me salary wise, but like you said, the credentials, and maybe if I want to do something further. So that's mm. probably some of the bad advice that that I took because you know extra credentials mm. never hurt. So it's it's true. You're you're absolutely right. Extra credentials never hurt. The only thing that I would say is that uh, 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 Professor Black Ops is this right. And this is and this is not hurting you personally. This is just you know the only thing that extra credentials do a, a lot of the times is just add more debt, right? But right. typically, when us as males especially African-American males, go and get PhD. A lot of that is already funded. A lot of the education oh, is already 100%. free. The majority 100%. of it is already free. So it's no hurt. At, so you're absolutely right. It just It's another credential that you have that you can speak to that op opens up other opportunities within your life. So absolutely. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. Then follow Dr. Dix. Like a lot of people don't, a few people know is I'm actually a professional. I teach at, teach at a lo local college as a give back. But mm -hmm. to a, if I had a PhD, when you go to uh, big universities, you got to have a PhD to teach. Like I teach mm. at local community colleges and I have a master's, I have an MBA. And I got a ton of experience, but to teach at a, especially a big PWI, like one of the, yeah. especially Ivy League or Big Ten or something, you got to have a PhD. And my long term right. goal actually is when I get probably 65, I just want to teach. You get health insurance and I can just use the same slides for the next 10 years. You've seen those professors use <laughs> The dusty slides, the information don't even, not even relevant anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, all the information is uh, antiquated, man, and, and and they're up there teaching us the same sort of stuff. You know, I gotta say this. I had to use the sound effects on that one because here's the thing, right? In marketing classes, this is why I tell people all the time, and I love marketing. And I think marketing is a fantastic major and a fantastic career. But from the marketing that I've been taught in school is antiquated. Like Professor Black Ops just said, when 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 you take a marketing class, you have 
uh, uh, professors with some dusty slides talking about, you know, advertisement from the 1980s. Man, that's not how it works today. It's all digital advertising, Facebook, using different platforms and so forth. And if your marketing program isn't going towards that or doesn't have a curriculum that supports that, I personally don't think that it's worth the juice, right? It, or or, or it, it, I don't think it's worth squeezing the juice at that point in time, right? So, you know, you have other ways that you can actually learn about marketing, especially on how it's done today without actually getting a marketing degree. But I do think marketing is pivotal for mm-hmm. every business. And it, it is a great career or it is a great degree to have if it allows you to leverage the technology side and it is up to date. If you have some curriculums out there, that um, aren't up to date, man. And I learned that really, uh, oh, uh, sure. I learned that all, all the time. <laughs> yeah, because I, I teach a class in, in cybersecurity. So every class I teach, we talk about the new hack, uh, what's going on, Tesla, cars, because you can hack autonomous trucks. So I try to bring mm-hmm. real world stuff in so we can actually talk about that, you know, to pivot with the information and make sure it's, you know, holistic. <laughs> with some Relevant. new stuff with, with the old stuff. But um, Dr. Dick says something. And, uh, my first intern, I did a video of that. It was in 1988, and I was actually mm-hmm. putting tapes on an IBM mainframe. And one of my uh, list, one of my subscribers said, "What are those?" And I told him, "You know, originally <laughs> wasn't enough uh, disk space on the machine, so you had to put information on tape." So he yeah. looked it up, and I had a picture of one. So he said, "Man, you the Moses of computers, man. That stuff is old." <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, man, I pre-cell phone. I'm about to say, I said, that's the digital mud, man, <laughs> putting information on tape. Well, I was struggling because we never used tape in college. And my my supervisor at the time, um, white lady, nice, she just told me, uh, I don't think we're going to invite you back next summer. <laughs> I mean, I was struggling. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Dix is 37. I'm 53. There's no Google. I didn't have anybody myself. So I'm taking home manuals and backpacks trying to figure this stuff out. <laughs> so, so, uh, so my story. I'm like Doctor This. I learned the most, and I was just grinding. I was just staying up every night, reading manuals, trying to do stuff. People would kind of help me, but they were busy. So a lot of times, you you just can't take people's advice. You just gotta grind it and kind of figure it out. But by the end of the summer, I was doing well. She said I could come back next summer, but it was it was <laughs> it was one of the roughest times of my life. And that's why I yep. tell other people, I, I did, like I said, I showed the tape on this video did. And we were just talking about, you would like to sell back bags that were actually cell phones back then. I own one. So I should have picked one of those. So, but those big storms in your life and that's why I can, when you in them at the time, they said insurmountable, but five or 10 years you go by, you go, man, that was just a little blip in my life, man. When I looked yep. it up. It, it wasn't that big, but when you in it, it's like, oh my God, I ain't gonna make it. Uh, did I pick the right major? <laughs> Am I doing something wrong? You just gotta grind through those storms and you're gonna get through it now. You got YouTube, Google, like you said, you can reach out a ton of guys, me, Black Eyes, Dr. Dix, Keep It Tech. You know, there's so many Kev Tech. There's so many people out there that, that'll help you now. Mm, mm, you, you brought up a good point. You, you brought up a fantastic point right there. And I tell people this all the time, right? <clears throat> the evolution in life is, is seasonal. And, and every every task, every job, every different uh, priority that you have, it has its seasons. I, I, I love that you said that, uh, Professor Blockhouse, right? When you're going through something, right, you just have to remember. And this is something that I... I learned early on within my my life, and it's helped me to a tremendous amount. Um, I, I quit the football team going into my sophomore year, or, or in my sophomore year as well, too, with with two games left, and we already was we we already played six games out of eight, and we were uh, two and two and four, right? And I quit the football team with two games left. One of the worst decisions I've ever made, but one of the decisions that you know, obviously, I look back on and say, if I wouldn't have done it. I probably would have quit something else after that. It was a learning lesson in my life because I was going through something. I wanted to be the cool guy. We were losing. It wasn't It wasn't fun anymore and so forth. And here's the thing. Like you said, you got to grind it out, right? Grind it out because it's only a certain amount of time. It's only a season. And once that you're out of that season, you're into a new season, mm-hmm. you look back at it and you say, you know what? Like that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. And, 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 and ever since then, 
the learning lesson in my life is this. When things get hard, you consistently beat it. You beat it. You beat it and beat it. And before you know it, you're going to be out of it within a matter of a month, two months, three months and so forth. And you're going to look back at it and say, you know what? That made me a lot stronger. It made me a lot stronger. I mean, like I was in a sales cycle last year around the same time, waking up middle of the night, two o'clock, because, you know, we wanted to get it in before the end of the quarter and so forth. And it was just it was brutal. I lost like a good nine pounds within the matter of two weeks because, you know, when I get under a lot of stress, I don't eat very much. Right. But you go through these things in life and you look back at it and you say, damn, like I made a lot of money off of that. Right. So right. these are the kind of things that you go through in life a lot of the times and you're going to get tested. And that's what life that's what makes life so beautiful. Right. You're going to get tested all just about every single year of your life. And if you're not getting tested, then you're not putting yourself in positions in order for you to grow and learn. Right. Uh, 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 that's what I say all the time as well, too. If you're not getting tested, you're not putting yourself in positions to grow and learn. So, guys, you know what? Uh, 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 think about what Dr. Uh, Professor Black Ops just said. Hey, you know, there, things are seasonal and, uh, you know, you have to you have to hone in a lot of the times and you have to beat it down. And then you come out on the side looking back at it and say it wasn't that bad. And you've learned a lot from those experiences. I love that you said that. Yeah, the other thing too is my mom had a rule: any anything you start, you gotta finish. So my mom was mm. born because I'm 53. My mom had me at 40, so my mom was was born in 1927. She actually picked cotton. She mm. had a quarter mm. of cotton. She picked, and my family left her her nephew so he can go to school. She picked his quota in the morning so he could go to school. So I'm working on this project like you, and I can't figure it out. I'm waking up at 2 a.m. I'm still at home. I'm like 26 and. I'm trying to figure it out. I keep running these runs and I'm waking up in an hour and I'm like, this is not the right number. It should be something. So I'm changing the algorithm. So my mom comes down. I, I remember like where she goes, you, you working too hard. You, you can't work this hard. I looked at her. I go, you pick cotton. She goes, yeah, I'm going to go back to bed. That's kind of hard. <laughs> what are you talking about? So when stuff get hard, I just say, man, my mom just died three years ago at 92. I just say, Man, I ain't picking cotton. And two, if you ain't never picked cotton, it has thorns. So when you grab it, it cuts your fingers. So we were at 91. Her hands was hands of stone. So when stuff get hard, I just go, man, I ain't picking cotton, man. It, it, ain't, ain't, nothing, <laughs> it ain't nothing I'm going to do. If I get fired tomorrow, if I lose everything, I, even at 53, I can rebuild it. So I just try to put everything in its proper place and it'll be realistic because I always laugh. Every time she yell, like, you pick cotton? What are you talking about, lady? I'm typing on a computer. Guy yelling at me at work. I'm going to be okay. My mom had one rule. She said, I don't have much, baby. I always got a bedroom if you broke. I said, that's all mm. I need. So I put everything in perspective now. So when I'm grinding in the cloud or I'm grinding on no sequel or I'm trying to figure out a data lake, I ain't picking cotton, man. I'm going to be okay. That's, that's <laughs> You know, that's a that's a fantastic that that is I, I I've never heard of that, but I get it, right? It's like it's like, man, it could be it could be worse. That's what it is. It can always be worse, right? And that's and that and, and that's what it is, right? I'm like, if if you're going through something, and a lot of times what we end up experiencing in life, a lot of times we say, Oh my God, somebody, I have it harder than somebody else, right? You have your mom with that experience of going through that. And my grandma did the same thing, right? Yeah. And and it, you, you look at it and you say from this perspective, it ain't harder than that. So no. let me get, up and get it done. Let me suck it up and get it done. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And my father was in the military. He was born in 1917. He he did World War II. When he came back home, he had to sit in the back of the bus, man. This is Jim Crow. Mm, mm, and my mm. father was super intellectual. I just as younger guy, I didn't I didn't understand it because he was always reading encyclopedias because he couldn't do the jobs he really wanted to do. He was in a Navy for 17 years. I said, why did mm. you leave after 17 years ago? It was just too much for me to take. He said, I was just mm. suicidal. So, so I left. Mm. So, mm. so all the stuff I go through, like I said, it's, it's a shout out. Shout out for Gabe for <laughs> being on that Brother other Brother Gabe's in the house. Brother Gabe's in the house, man. Let me let me, let me give uh, Brother Gabe a shout out. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I say, what's up? He did I an excellent job. He, he did an excellent Gabe. job. Of, yeah, he did an excellent job on an argument. So he know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Shout out to that. I'll be fighting. So I'm not going to argue with people on YouTube. I'll be fighting. I'm old. I'm old and grumpy. I'm going to be fighting. So shout out to Gay Bay. I, th I thought he handled the tech bros in an excellent way. I'm too old. I'm fighting. I'm not doing that. But <laughs> and, and, and back to the topic, though. But like you said, 
there's so many opportunities. The doctor talked about it. We can get it. There's so many ways to help people. And like I said, you're, I send people your way. I give people advice and I say, just don't take my advice. Reach out to my brother, Black Heights. He might charge you a little bit, but you need to get all, get all the advice you can. You grown man, make your own decision. That's it. So you can, you can listen to the rapper. You can listen to me. You can listen to uh, you. You can listen to Gabe. Then put all that in and make the best decision for yourself. That's, so that's why I tell that, you. That's absolutely right. That's that's absolutely right. Uh, 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 PBO. I, I think uh, you know it, that's the thing, right? You like I love the fact that the thing is, I think today is a lot of there's just so much information out there, right? And I think a lot of the times, a lot of people are just so indulge or you know they have so much information to where that information causes analysis paralysis and it causes for them to get stuck because there's so much out there and they're scared to make an actual decision and i can actually see it uh, uh today uh even with some of the comments that i get on a lot of the channels you know people asking about certain kind of you know majors and things like that and in different types of careers right um there's so much information out there and ultimately i think a lot of people really want that guidance and advice to say you just need to do this right uh but ultimately that's that's not what we're here for we're here to say okay well this is what you can do let me give you the information and you know this is how i did it right and and people need to ultimately listen to what they need to listen to and then make their ultimate decision based on their current position and um you know people really looked at it that way i think a lot more decisions would be made a lot more decisions would be made a lot faster you, you brought up a good point there my man yeah and that's the last thing i did i'm challenging everybody i did a video and I, it it went super well it's, i did a video of my top five failures in life and a lot mm. of people really love it because most people don't talk about your failures on youtube Mm, like mm. I tried to start a business with some guys that wasn't on the same page with me as consultant. I lost about a hundred thousand dollars. But what I tell people, what I learned from business wise that I take forward when I talk to management, I understand what cost of insurance is for an employee. I understand what that FTE with the NBA and putting all that knowledge together. Right. Then we talked mm. about imposter syndrome when you get promoted and you don't think you belong there. Mm, I said, I said, mm. I don't have that feeling because I grind for all the little, all the little nuggets I got. I grind for. I think I deserved it. My mom was super religious. She said, "The Most High don't give you what you deserve if you work for it." So I've never had a, if I got there, I deserve it. But a lot of people mm. were ha that keeps coming up on my channel. So I was like, if you work hard and you grind for it, it was meant for you. And sometimes you might get a little too much, and you might need to call us, and we gonna help you stay there. So right. we, we we here right. for you. So yep. I told him you you can't you can't quote that on my channel. Imposter said, "Nah, that 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 ain't on my channel. You need to come see me. Whatever <laughs> you need to do, I can coach you up. If not, I got I got Pookie Gabe in there. He was going off on people the other day on the YouTube. <laughs> I can see the Pookie Gray. We have different views of cybersecurity, but that's my man that I support him. So we all move a little different and do things different. So you know." Thanks, yeah, bro. I, 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 I appreciate that, bro. PBO, man. We got we got we got brother Jabron decided to join us this morning too, man. How you doing this morning, brother? What's up, people? Thanks for the How shout out by my video, Jabron. I appreciate that, man. Bro, you're the realest. You're the realest. Like you just lay it all out there. There's nothing to hide. And um, I respect it, man. I really appreciate it, bro. What you got for us this morning, man? How, how, how you doing, brother Jabron? You good this morning, man? It's Saturday yeah, I'm morning. All good. I'm in. I'm in. A, I'm in a good space, man. Grinding. I just started um, two of those Google certifications. I want to see what they're hitting for. So, yeah. um, I just want to see if it can add some value. You know, being a web design, if I get a get this UX certificate from Google, maybe it can increase. You know, the amount of customers I'm able to bring in and and yeah. learn something new. Um, so, just just grinding, man. I was up late last night recertifying for Facebook. Like it just is what it is. It's the life it I done. chose, you know. That, it's the that's life the life I chose. That's the life you chose, and that's the life that you're going and you're heading towards, man. I, I I love that, man. So so so, what do you have to this subject today, man? What, what do you want to add, my brother? I think I think people forget that you can work smart and hard, mm. and um, so they're always looking for these shortcuts, but it's still going to be hard because it has to be worth it, right? If it wasn't mm. hard, everyone would do it. Um, I think mm. there's a lot of different things going on, and I think one of the things we need to address is the culture needs to change. You know, mm. we need to change. Sorry, we need to change our culture. Um, you know, most parents know that most athletes don't own teams, right? Mm -hmm. But then they put their kids in youth sports. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. right? Knowing that that's not that's not the top level. So is it that you're not looking at it like that? You don't believe your kids that smart? Like what's what's the reason for setting them up for not failure, right? But I never seen a thirty for thirty broke billionaires, right? It's always thirty for thirty broke athletes, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have the money, but they don't have the education. Right, mm. whether it be financial education, whether it be the, the education to know if the right people are around you, you know, with your finances. Like, there's so many different factors. Like, life is complex, man. It is, it's way it is. more hard than just that's the answer, you know? Mm, 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 mm. I, you know what? You, you know what's interesting about that, Jabron, and I'm glad you brought it up, right? You know, sports is something that is very big in the United States. And I have, you know, a, 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 brother-in-laws, nieces, nephews, and so forth that has spent a lot of time in sports. And, you know, I got an opportunity to see, and I grew up playing it myself. I got an opportunity mm -hmm. to see when I left the country that other countries really don't have their kids playing sports like that. They have them doing, you know, other things, piano, karate, uh, 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 you know, all sorts of ballet, all swim, all the sorts of stuff it, to make them a more well-rounded academically type of a person. They put them into different, you know, camps and all this other stuff. And they end up, if you think about the education level, these are the same people that climb the ranks into corporate America and end up making a lot of money and end up, like you said, becoming, you know, millionaires, billionaires in no time. They're typically not the yes. athletes. If you think about the right. athletes that actually make it to the pro level, it's like 1%. 1% right. of all college athletes end up doing it. But our, our parents... In our culture really have, you know, we, we, we make it seem as if it is the 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 uh, at least the, the sport or or it is the the route that people need to take in order for them to make it. And that's right. not the reality of it is. Right. Well, why are you putting somebody or why are you encouraging people to do something that really a lot of people don't make it at the professional level? Now, I get why people do sports, because there's a lot you right. can learn from it, but right. putting so much into it. It's 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 beyond my belief. And that's where I told my wife and my wife and I have agreed. That's not the route that we're going with our kids. Yeah, uh, that's but not the route we're going to go with our kids at all. I think it's a, it, I think it depends on what sport you're going to put them in, too. Like mm -hmm. my boys played baseball for the first time last year from well, really like six months on up to my oldest is 10 years old. It's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like we're doing combat sports. Ain't no, and we're not throwing balls. We're not hitting balls. We're not wearing equipment. Like we're gonna go back to the essence of what sports are. We gotta be wrestling, gotta be jujitsu, gotta be boxing. Because now you know what a loss feels like. It's not a score. You feel the loss. Um, and, and then from that point on, everything else is easy in school. Um, but but again, culture wise, you know, we need to stop touting these athletes and entertainers. Look, we did that. Right? As black people in America, that's nothing new. We've done that. It's over. Let's do something new. And I'm not yeah. saying don't go into sports. I'm not saying don't be an entertainer. But we need to stop acting like it's a new thing, like you're breaking down some barriers. We've, mm. we've been doing that for years, right? We mm. need more black doctors, more black lawyers, more blacks in tech. And then we need a black Tesla, right? Or someone who leads a, leads whatever new version of Tesla is, right? It doesn't have to be mm. all black, super black, right? But somebody with the foresight, you know, like Robert Johnson, like David Wright, mm -hmm. like all these, these black billionaires that you never hear of. But yeah. you hear about these yeah. lower level billionaires that, you know, are entertainers. And I think it's like a subversive way to kind of push you in that direction, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I asked a friend the other day, um, I said, I don't believe that uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce are billionaires. She said, why not? I said, what billionaires, you know, shoot campaigns for other people's products? Mm -hmm. They just did a mm -hmm. whole Tiffany campaign. They don't own that. Billionaires yeah. let their yeah. money work for them. Yep. And so yep. it's like you got to be aware to see these things. And it's not about diminishing people's dreams, but it's about giving them the best chance to succeed. Mm -hmm. Kane said something that's that's interesting. And I, 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 I like what he said. I want you guys to comment on this one, too. It says you can use sports to get a scholarship. You uh, what you have to get what you need. So so I, I, I I'll let you guys comment on this one, too. I, I want to say something on this one, too. And King, you're right. Right. Sports is definitely a way to get scholarships. But I think. I think what what you have to look at, right, is 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 people, you know, have that even even my boss, right? Uh, 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 I, he's fifty three, has kids in high school, and he was a D one athlete. But his son, he's trying to push his son to be a D one football player, right? His son just doesn't have the grit, the grind to become that sort of a person. So, 
you know, uh, uh, one of the things that he wants to encourage his son to do is go towards like the golf, right? A, a sport that he's going to use for the rest of his life and something that he can probably get a scholarship in. Those are types, types of the encouragement that you should be pushing your kids along towards. And I think that's exactly what we need to do in, you know, in a lot of the, the black community as well, too, because the majority of the sports that we play is typically football and basketball. That's it. Right. But there's so many other sports that exist out there where the opportunities for scholarships are far beyond and a lot easier to do it. You can tennis, right? Golf, right? Lacrosse, uh, all these other sports that exist, field hockey, all these sports that exist out there that you can really get a scholarship to top a- 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 academic schools and powerhouses if you got that exposure to go in that direction. So you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. You can use sports to get scholarships. I think it's fantastic, right? But don't put all your eggs in one basket is kind of what I'm saying as well, too. So you guys can chime in on that one. My father told me that. I was playing basketball my whole life. I think my sophomore year, he said, listen, Jabron, you're really good, but you're 5'8". <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. ah, yeah, I guess so, right? And I don't disagree with King at all. Like, yeah, you can't get a scholarship, but what are you sacrificing for that, right? A lot of these mm-hmm. dudes, once they stop playing, their life is over. Yes. Right? Because they, yep. they tricked themselves into thinking they were going to go pro, Right. They think they tricked themselves into thinking like this was the end all be all. So again, like I said last time, if you have a goal, if you have a focus, I don't have a problem with it, you know. But if you're if you're in your sophomore year, and no colleges are talking to you, you're not on any AAU teams, you're not on any traveling teams, you might want to start focusing on okay, where am I going to get a scholarship at this state level school, and how am I going to leverage this to go to the next level? I just don't think it's the end all be all that is presented as. I think people get too engrossed in it, just like people think they can wake up you know, watch a video and no crypto. Like, it's just not that easy. <laughs> you know, you got to respect the work. So what do you think about uh, uh, this one, uh, 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 PBO? We need more black male teachers in the black community. You are you are a professor. Talk about talk about your experience there. And what, it, you know, I, that, that's interesting um, that, 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 that I, I, I can say this. Growing up, uh, I, I remember a handful of, of black male teachers doing secondary education. Um, I don't recall very many in the college education, except for my African-American studies uh, class that I had at University of Milwaukee, uh, uh, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. But I don't I don't recall there being many male uh, black teachers that exist out there. What's your thoughts on that you, with you being a teacher? Oh, he's 100 percent right. And the, the numbers at the college level is slim. Because uh, I teach at a local college. It's, they, we probably got a thousand employees. In IT, we probably got three. <laughs> I mean, it mm. is super small. Uh, I used to teach at this nonprofit college that ended up closing. While I was there, I was trying to get people to transfer. And the people, some of the students were actually homeless. It, it was crazy, mm. but it was a stepping stone and they were trying. So I got mm. in there and this young black dude was just, he was upset and he was yelling at this teacher. I didn't even realize I did it. I went in there and I grabbed him out the class. And this one dude said, I was actually just cussing him out. I was like, dude, you got to get focused. She's about to kick you out. You at the lowest of the low, man. There's no lower than this for profit, man. I said, Mm. she can physically kick you out. You got to get your emotions under control, man. Mm. So he Mm. took a deep breath and he goes, she going to kick me out. I said, I got you. So I went in there and I took her out. I said, it was his fault. He's 100% wrong. How do you feel? She said, I was feeling threatened. I said, we teach at the same time. As long as you here, I'm here. I need him mm. to get back in your class and I'm going to be right next door. So if you need me to get him, I got you. Mm. So then I pulled, she mm. said, okay, you promise? I said, I promise. I said, I need you to do me this favor. I didn't even know the lady. She said, well, I know you work here. I said, any introduction you need, I got you. Whatever you need, I got you. So I pulled him off. I said, man, I don't put my reputation on the line. My boys is going to be in here because this dude like 6'2", 220. I'm your height, bro. I'm sure you up 5'7". I'm like, dude, I'm about to slap. I got some dudes going to whip your ass. So I need you to pay attention, man. Because I'm <laughs> yes, trying sir. to help you, man. I don't do this a lot, man. My yeah. God put me on this earth to help young brothers, man. So I need you to really focus. He focus ended up, up. Yeah. graduating, going to where I Beautiful. teach at. Now he's at a four-year college, about to graduate in, Beautiful. I think it was MIS or computer information mm. stuff. But that was me trying to be a t- you know teacher stepping in, but if I wasn't there, he wouldn't have had a chance. He would have been a spell, and it would have been over with. Because we don't get yep. second chances a lot. Mm, so. mm, mm. And and that's a good point, right? I, I think I think you know, like I said earlier, I said you know we model behaviors by what we see. If you don't see a lot of males into these sort of spaces, 
right? You don't feel like you you belong there. You don't feel like you know, it, especially your kind, right? And I, I don't I don't. There's you know, with me, I, I I'm a person that I truly believe that you can learn from everybody. But at the end of the day, you still like to see people who are very similar like you and who have achieved and accomplished some of the same things. Right. And I think there's, there's something about, you know, seeing an individual who come from somewhat of a, a same sort of experience with, like you have uh, 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 that has done things in, 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 in that you haven't done, you can look up to that. You can aspire to that. Right. And uh, uh, I think, I think having, having more black male teachers at all levels is something that, you know, obviously is an area that needs to be improved on. Um, King said this, we're going to jump over to something IT. King says, however, with IT, you don't need a degree. It's people that don't have a high school diploma, but have a CCNP, IJS. Um, I, I will let you take that one, Jabron. I, I am a person that I think with IT, yes, you don't need a degree to get into it. However, however, if you want to move, if you want opportunities to be, um, uh, great. If you want to have a, a large door open instead of a small door, right, where you're going to uh, go through that door and you're going to have maybe two different paths that you can take versus you going through that door and you have 20 different paths you can take, right? The degree is going to give you 20 different paths. Not having a degree is only right. going to give you maybe that four, right? right. So, so, so yes, you don't need an, a degree to get into IT, but you're limiting yourself to opportunities that exist out there. What's yeah. your take on that, Jabron? I mean, you don't need a degree, a degree for anything if you make your own business. Like, you don't mm -hmm. need it. It's only when you're looking for a job, right? And when you're asking someone for a job, then they determine the requirements, right? Mm -hmm. Like, my dad always told me, take Caesar's coin, do Caesar's deed. That's it. So mm -hmm. need, eh, nothing's really a matter of need, right? But it's it's what are you going to learn other than having that degree? It's not so much the hard skills; it's the soft skills to get you in the room. It's the soft mm -hmm. skills to get you that that um that promotion that wasn't listed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not about need. There's a lot of people with a lot of skills. You know, DOD we get our butt kicked all the time with some 13 year old hacker out of the Ukraine, right? So it's not about the degree, <laughs> right? Yeah. And but it's about you being able uh, to get that job because they require that. Um, mm. it's, ne it's never about need. It doesn't devalue someone's intellect because they don't have a degree. And a lot of people, especially in the black community, they look down on education for that simple fact. You think mm. you're better than me because you got a degree. Like, nah, bro, like you probably, you may know more than me. I just chose to go this way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, not, yeah, it's definitely not about need. There's a lot of people without degrees that do a lot of amazing things, but there's probability and there's possibility. And so mm -hmm. you might want to go with the probable uh, unless you're going to start your own thing. And, and, and that's cool too. Yep. Yep. I, I say this, follow the path. I mean, like it's, it's, here's the thing on that one too. And I'll add on to that. I, you know, I, I'm a type of person, I'm a process person. I typically, I, I think the safe bet is to kind of, not to say you're going to follow the crowd, but you want to go what, what what's already been accomplished before. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and what majority of people have experienced doing. And here's the thing. A lot of people have the degrees The majority of millionaires have degrees and so forth. Right. Like if that's, if, if this is what you want to become, then follow that path. You can go another path, like Javon says. You can start your own business, but you guys have no idea. Starting a business, it takes forever to do it, and you need education. And, it is not and there's fun. A, a huge, it, it's not fun. It's, it's, it's a time investment, right? It takes away from your personal time, your family, it, it, your finances, all this other stuff. People think that starting a business is the easiest thing ever. The majority of businesses fail, and the majority of businesses that do make it, it takes them seven years, seven years to turn a profitable and turn it into a profitable business. Right. So, guys, it's not it's not as easy as you think it's going to be starting your own business. It doesn't matter what field you're in. You can be a blue collar. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. Let's go to um, Fernando. Fernando says, any tips on best places to invest money for profit? My bank literally pays me a dollar per month on my savings account and I'm sick of it. Oof. Let me go. Any, anybody want to take that one? No, nah, I don't. I don't comment on other people's money because you can play me with play me on a lot of things, but my money's not one of them. I don't give investment <laughs> advice because if you help me lose money, I'm gonna pull up. I'm one of those guys, so I don't. Man, get you a good mutual fund. Uh, I'm like uh, Black Heights. Go to a mutual fund and pay somebody, man. They, they, a lot of them online. Get you some great advice. Those professionals. I'm too old. I, I ain't in crypto. I'm an old dude. I got yeah. some stocks and bonds. I got Black Heights. I, I got a couple rental properties in the hood so i can make a little pass, passive cash flow i don't give advice on uh but on money i stay in my lane that's one thing i know at 53 
I don't mess up people's money. I'm, I'm going to throw it over to Brother Jabron. He's got a lot of good ideas for you. I'm going to throw it over to him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. He, he laid that one up for you. Yeah. <laughs> Look, what you got there, bro? Pass it to me at half court, like, bro. What? <laughs> um, I would say make try to um, eliminate and minimize your debt, and then look into some uh, stocks. You know, do some research. Um, you know, YouTube's full of experts, but look at people who actually show results. Um, you know, Black Heights, you got Anton Daniels out there. People who show receipts, it's it's a good thing because then you see it actually works. And um, you know, experiment a little bit. But I would say get into some stocks. Um, you know, it's if your savings account isn't beating the rate of inflation, you're losing money anyway. So yeah. put it in the stocks, make sure you can take it out, try to stay liquid. Um, but it's going to it has to be what you're comfortable with. You know, like if your instinct is telling you not to do it, don't do it. Like, yeah. just don't do it, because that's how you end up with regrets is when you do something that, you know, you shouldn't have done. And it turns out how you wish it wouldn't have. Mm. Now you got to live with that regret for the rest of your life and possibly put your family and some type of financial strain. So um, just just do your research, be cautious, and don't try to get it all back tomorrow. Um, be patient, bro. Be patient. Yeah. It, ta- it takes a bit. You got you to be patient. I think where most people fall short is they want to be here to see their legacy, right? So they don't mm-hmm. leave things for their kids because they're not going to be able to see it. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get the legacy now. You might have to wait. So be patient. Time's on your side. Yeah. Just be patient. I, I, I say so. Veneta is uh, uh, in college, um, and and yes, a savings account. If you just keep your money in your savings account, Veneta is probably not the best idea. But we're not we're not financial uh, uh, gurus up here. And I'm gonna take the approach like uh, brother uh, PBO. But here's here's what I would say: when you're investing, um, I've made so many mistakes in my life, and investing is is one of them. Right, thinking that you know short term is 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 the best way to do it, you know. Uh, it's really about the long term. It's about, you know, having enough money where you just don't have to worry about it. Right. And just letting it sit there without having to touch it. Right. Um, I remember when I started started doing some day trading back in uh, 2016 and making a good amount of money. But uh, that's another path where, you know, it's almost like a guessing game. You're gambling. And, you know, there's days that you can do very well and there's days that you can't do very well. And unfortunately, right, it, it's it's you're going to end up on the losing side. So my thing is, is this when you're going to get into investing, um, you want to put it into stocks, index funds, ETFs and just let it sit there and let it sit there for years and let it grow and let it compound, let it compound. And long term, when you're 30, when you're 40, you're going to see it growing even more and you don't touch it. That's that's how you're going to win the game. That's how you're gonna win the game. So long term, don't think about the short term piece of it. Brother King said this, man. The five eight club in the house, man. Y'all the sports, man. Pit more energy. Pit more energy. I love it. I love it, man. Oh but, man, that's. <laughs> that's weird. I think only uh, I think only like twelve percent of the people in the United States is above six two. So yeah, people, yeah. Well, that's Kevin <laughs> Samuel stars it out like everybody's supposed to be sick. The majority of people in the United and two is when you add the world, all the Asian dudes are short, man. It's like 50 billion of them dudes. So most people on the planet's under six foot. So with Kevin them throw it out like, oh yeah, everybody's six foot with a suit on. I'm like, dude, that's not Listen, true. I'm a numbers guy. I'm a numbers uh, guy. They said the average man in North Korea is 4'10. Yeah. Because of the amount of nutrition. Yeah. The average man mm. is four ten. Yeah, mm. so, yeah. So wow. we be getting beat up in the United States. The average person on the planet is under six foot. Yeah, in the United yeah. States, it's, it's and when you do six two around the world, it's like three percent. I mean, it's a super low number. So, mm. but can but mm. can I can I comment on King's uh, other comment? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Which one? Um, and I'm I'm changing. And we talking about degrees. Yeah. Jabron worked at works at DOD. I worked at DOD for 11 years. It's called 8550. You got to have a cert or a degree. And when you go for those, especially Fortune 500 companies or those big consulting companies, and even your guy from Google said they have hundreds of thousands of people applying for those jobs, mm-hmm. those Cisco jobs. Mm-hmm. The tiebreaker is your credentials when you first get in. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of people be saying the gatekeepers. I get a lot of people on my, my channel talking about gatekeepers. So that's what mm-hmm. the gatekeepers use to measure people. But now as I get older, hanging out with Keep It Taking and some guys, certs is definitely a way. And it's my job to make sure they respect certs 
on the level of degrees, but those old guys don't do that. I argue with yeah. them every day. And those are the guys are hiring. It's not us. Mm -hmm. And most of those people don't look like us. Let's be real clear. And mm -hmm. I and I'll be I you know I could talk to them now because we cool. I've talked to the CEO, a CIO on my channel. She's gonna come on there, white lady. And I and mm -hmm. I whispered in her ear, I said, Hey, we gotta hire more black people. She started counting Indians. I like no nah, FBA, foundational black Americans. People from here. <laughs> come on. I said, we need to get a program. Cause now I'm in those rooms, so we cool. So I can I can whisper in her ear. She said, "Oh, I never thought about that." I was like, well, mm -hmm. "We need to be real intentional." Cause for me, I think brothers gonna disappear over the next twenty years if we don't get it together. Mm -hmm. Cause like mm -hmm. like like you said, between automation, lack lack of education. If you look at, listen to Yvette Cornell and Tone Talk, they talking about the net worth for black people is fifteen hundred dollars when you take off depreciate depreciating assets, and the Fortune five hundred says. Black wealth is going to be zero in 2053. That was before the pandemic. Mm. Right? So I tell people, so yeah. I, I'm... Yeah. Yeah, I, so nice. y'all can go, Google that. Double check me, chat. Now, now I'm throwing out... I need y'all to double... But those are out there. And that's pre-pandemic. So if it's 2053 before, hell, it's 2043 now. Mm. So, mm. I, I, so I tell people, we need to be real intentional because we ain't got much time left. That's my... Maybe I'm overestimating. I'm 53. I hang out with some black nurses. They said the average black dude passed away around 63 with stress. I'm like, damn, I only got 10 more years. I got to get going. Man. <laughs> my, my time back up. I, I got to be real intentional, man. Yeah. I got to lose some weight. Work on my high blood pressure, man. And you got to relax, Professor. You be looking for the smoke, too. You got to I do. I, do. Yeah. I want the smoke, man. I'm telling them, man. I want all electronic smoke, man. You started 1988. I came out the digital mud with tapes, man. Let's get it, man. But so, yeah, so those are those are the statistics. And those are real statistics. So we got to real be real intentional. I think we plan. I like to see a lot of non-black dudes playing. And yeah. I'm going, I didn't comment on a basketball. I ran D1 track and walk on. It's less oh, wow. than 1% get to D1. Mm -hmm. So you talk about 5% mm -hmm. of people D1. And if you're short, you're not making it. If your mm -hmm. daddy 5'8 and fat, you ain't going to make it, man. Mm -hmm. You need to get on this tech. Mm -hmm. That's a more realistic test. So mm -hmm. we playing around with sports. So statistically, yeah. if you ain't 6'8 like LeBron, 252, you need to pick up this CNA book, get you some Cisco, get you some Oracle, get you some SQL Server. You need mm -hmm. to get you some networking. Because, dude, the mm -hmm. odds of going pro are small. And look, mm -hmm. don't even talk about injury. Yeah. I, I, I was playing around with – I went to Indiana State University. We suck at basketball. I was hooping with him. This dude set a screen on me about 250. That dude almost separated my shoulder. I'm like, oh, this ain't no regular pickup game. These dudes are <laughs> seven foot and we suck. <laughs> I ran track, I ran 800, I ran little mile. We went down to Texas. Them dudes be really running in the south. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to pick up these books because these dudes ain't playing down south. They running, running. You know, talk about the Africans that came over here. Yeah. People don't realize this. I think NIA and track is devastating. Why? They haven't passed the TOEFL yet for foreign students. It'd be Africans over here running sub four minute miles in NIA schools because they can't speak English yet. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so I so I've been in D1. My roommate hooped. He was D1. We suck. My other roommate was a baseball player. The percentage of you going pro, a buddy of mine, six foot, he hooped in Finland and made big money, but man, it's hard. He said people were throwing quarters at him in Finland. He said, Well, you hoop overseas, <laughs> man. You be in a high school gym one day with five hundred and ten thousand men. Hooping overseas, you can make three or four hundred thousand dollars, but even that's rare. Yeah. So the you need to pick up them books to get this IT much easier. I ain't gonna say it's easy, easy, but if you study, pick the right thing, get with heights, get with get, you can much better shot, high percentage of you being all successful right. than you trying to post up LeBron James. That's all I'm gonna say. You got high. No, this is how hard I, I, I it agree. is. This is how hard it is to make it without a degree. If you make it big without a degree, they'll give you one. Mm. Mm. Oh you yes, you're five, right. Five, five, five. An honorum, honorum yeah, degree. Five. You're right. They'll be like, you you're know right. What? Here it is. There you go. That's Bye. that is true. That is. I never thought about that, Jabron. That's a great point, man. Wow, wow, wow. Check this out, uh, Francis. I thank my parents for sending me to private school, especially as an African American. Even though I was the only one in my class, it showed me that sports are not the only means to make it. Absolutely, Francis. Yes, you know you're, you're absolutely right. Academics, academics is important, and there's even you know we talk about sports, and we're talking about sports and getting scholarships, but. It's just as easy to get an academic scholarship as well. If, if you if you were an uh, above average student, 
right? If, if, if you are, you don't have to be the top of your class, all those, that's, that's excellence, right? And that's what you should be striving for. However, if you do well, you're going to get a scholarship. I mean, like I graduated with a 3.3 and got partial scholarships to, you know, school, right? So um, it, it's, it's, that's another way that you can go without having to think about sports and you can stay on the intellectual path and get there a lot sooner, right? And you don't have to, you know, uh, 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 take the beating. Your body doesn't have to take the beating. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, let's say this. Venators, any tips? No, 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 no. No, Vene, we're not going to go back to the financial advice, my brother. <laughs> yes, we are. We are that. BK from the Rockies say, "Good point, guys." Uh, uh, me, me, same one says. I think Google was ear hustling your last video. I made a comment and had a recruiter reach out to me. Hey, that's see, that's wow. absolutely fantastic. You'll be surprised how many people actually do listen to our content, right? I have people. I guess you guys saw from my email. I had people uh, uh, constantly reaching out to us for. Uh, 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 you know, the to, to for ad specials and for partnerships and things like that. And I've been just, de, you know, denying them at this point in time. But uh, uh, yes, there's a lot of people that go through our content. And um, I wouldn't be surprised, me saying one, that uh, uh, there's been people that's reaching out. And you also have to remember, too, the network is quite big and, it, and it's quite diverse. You had Chang over here from Google. You got PBO. You have uh, 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 Brother Gay. You have a lot of people that comes on this channel that you know watch the content and don't be surprised it is if it is somebody from google right um let's go to make sure they get their linkedin on because i i link my uh youtube to my linkedin and i i get an offer probably every two weeks by somebody who's trying to offer me some or or a class or or collaboration so yep i think i think i think that's important i think that's very important um a to B sparkling was they already responded to Veneta. He will you have yep yep yep. We, we're not we're going to respond to that anymore. Veneta, three J O N K three D. So shalom, brother. It is a business concentration that you've been pushing. I went into engineering and found it wasn't for me. So I'm currently trying to figure things out. Yes, yes. So so I think the question is more around the M I S that uh, that that I, I talk about. Um, so here's the thing, right? Uh, management information systems is a business concentration. It is a business degree, guys. That's exactly what it is. A lot of schools have it as a, a bachelor of science in business or either is a, a bachelor's of business administration. The school that I went to, it was a bachelor's of business administration. It still is a bachelor's of business administration and management information systems, or they may change the name to information technology management. Same exact degree, same exact courses and so forth. Uh, I think it's fantastic because not only are you going to have an opportunity to go down the tech space and get exposure to it, but also understand the business fundamentals. So the more opportunities that you have in life, whether tech side, business side, that's what management information systems gives you the opportunity to do. Now, one thing about the degree is this. It's going to give you a lot of options. A lot of people don't like a lot of options. A lot of people need to be told what they need to do. But just know that this degree does give you a lot of options. Once you're in it, you have to pick a side. Pick a side, go down that path to whatever lifestyle that you want to get to. Let's just say you want to make $100,000 a year. Go down a path that's going to allow you to make $100,000 a year. If you don't go down a path that allows you to make $100,000 a year, you're going to be wasting your time. But I say this, uh, fantastic degree. I love the degree. The reason why I push it because I am a management information systems major, right? And uh, and got my MBA in management of technology, which is basically the same sort of thing, guys. So a great degree, great degree. Um, Venator, please, can you recommend some YouTube channels that recommended MIS students to check for extra lessons? Uh, don't know of any. I don't know of any, Venator. Uh, we are the, 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 the MIS channel, right? You got other people out there. Um, you got Mr. Shane Hummus, who's a fantastic content creator as well. Uh, he talks about college majors, engineering, and all that other stuff. And I get a lot of inspiration from him. Uh, but uh, one thing that you will see on his channel is it's divorce, it, more diverse. It talks about all different types of degrees and management information systems in his mind is the best business degree that exists out there and one of the best majors out there as well, too. So uh, uh, not only am I pushing it and saying it, but there you have other content creators that's out there that talks about the degree being a fantastic degree as well, too. Uh, MIS is hard. Yes, MIS is hard. At the end of the day, going to school is hard. <laughs> Certain <laughs> courses are hard. <laughs> Going to school is hard. Committing time is hard. Uh, getting on YouTube and creating a, con uh, a channel is hard, right? You got to think about content. You got to think about who you're going to have on, who you want to, what you want to talk about. It's not easy. 
uh, life is just not easy. I wish it was easy. Uh, Jabari Brown, PBO, did you provide mentoring for students pursuing cybersecurity? Do you provide mentoring for students pursuing cybersecurity degrees? Jabari says that, man. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I can and will if you reach out to me. A lot of times, too, is like I said, I, I'll give you some and I'll send you to hikes because I want you to get. But, yeah, I definitely do. And a lot of times um, I usually do a lot of stuff for free. So a lot of times I just we just link up and we just go live and let's just break it down for everybody to see. And then you can have it. And I'll send you to a couple other people. And then, like I said, you take all that input and make the uh, best decision for yourself. Um, and two is we talk about your background, your skill set. I'm a traditionalist, like I said. I went to college. I got a computer science degree. I programmed for 20 years. I was a system analyst. And to me, all that makes a great cybersecurity professional, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the 20-year-old goal model, right? So some people want to try to do an instant when it's this hard. So we can mm -hmm. just talk about all that. Because to me, mm -hmm. cybersecurity, you got to secure a whole company. So if you ain't never programmed, never been a DBA, never been an app, never wrote a policy, never seen anything, that's a lot of things to try to pick up ASAP. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's levels to this. Right. So if you so I usually tell people be a program or a network engineer, that's the basis of cybersecurity, because you either attacking the network or the program to attack the network. Right. So, but but if you've never done it, it's going to be hard for you to know how to secure it. But but, yeah, I, I, I would definitely uh, mentor people and talk to them about it and, and just kind of break it down, give them my, my two cents. Awesome. Check it out. Check out PBO, guys. Uh, uh, moderators, do me a favor. Drop his channel in the in the link uh, uh, on the channel again so people can go subscribe to him. Great content creator, guys. Uh, PBO has a, a lot of information, a lot of knowledge on cybersecurity, guys. Go and check him out. Looks like we got quite a bit of people watching us right now. So, guys, go and check out PBO. Hit that subscribe button. Let's support our brothers, man. That's what we do around here. We support the people sure. that constantly give back to the community and give back that game. Let's see what a uh, casual economist says. I have a minor in MIS. This channel makes me want to go back and major in it. <laughs> I'm selling it. That's what I'm doing, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm selling it. I, you know, I think here's the thing, right? I've gotten uh, um, colleges reaching out saying, Antoine, you know, can you speak? And I, I had I was speaking to a school yesterday about the major and so forth. But this is another way that, you know, I'm able to uh, grow the business as well, too. Right. Obviously, in, 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 in their sponsorships and partnerships and things like that, because if you look in YouTube, if you look up management information systems, our channel is going to come up. One of the things about growing a business and I'll and I'll share this with you all who's going out there and trying to create a brand or a YouTube channel. You want to have a niche. You really want to have a niche and you want to own that niche. And from there, you can build off of that. Talk to a TLA, talk to a lot of other folks who are growing their channels and so forth. And sometimes it's it's it's, it's hard, right? For IT, especially in the, you know, the sector that I'm in, it's it's very difficult to grow a big platform. But the biggest thing is, is that you have a lot of supporters, even though your channel is small and you have a lot of people wanting to partner with you and sponsor you and so forth just from having a small channel, right? So uh, it's very important, right, to have a niche and then lock it down. Then you can expand beyond that. We'll be expanding as well to other areas, but management, management information systems, information technology management is my focus on this channel, as well as, you know, giving game on other IT careers and so forth. Um, what did Mrs. Dana Dana Bass says, "Choose your heart." Yes, you got to choose your heart. I mean, that's it's it's <laughs> it's it's that simple. What do you guys want to comment on that? Oh, I I'll go. Go ahead, Jabron. Go ahead. I was just thinking when he said uh, it's hard. I was like, man, like I, the pig and cotton incident, right? With, with mm -hmm. your mom, professor. Um, <clears throat> you know, my father growing up in Newark with eleven brothers and sisters. You know. Um, but then I was like, I applied for college while we were in Iraq. And I didn't know I got into it. So I got back home. Oh, and, you're, you're, you're uh, working. Two you're working. Go ahead. Right? I buy everything oh. I needed. You're good. You're good now. Uh, <laughs> I brought everything I needed. I went, I went to college. And then, first day, first class, have some kids say, anyone that goes to the war is stupid. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God. Like, this is the world I'm in now. So it was tough, man. You got to have that discipline, but he wasn't the goal. He was irrelevant to my goal. So just focus on your goals, man. That's all that really matters. Get after it. Mm, 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 mm. I love it. 
I, I, I love that you said that. And, you know, she might, she brought up a good point. What you want to contribute to that one? Uh, PBU, you're going to say something. Yeah, she's 100 percent. Like you said, pick your heart. Um, I just kind of got lucky. I knew I was going to be a programmer since I was a junior in high school. So I got to everything. The only thing that was kind of hard mm-hmm. for me in college was uh, you got to take calculus in the old days for computer science. I could take you to the area of a tornado. I never used that in any of my jobs, but I had to take the class. So I kind of got me a tutor. After that, it was just kind of like, okay, we're up and running. You're a junior programmer. You struggled a little bit because, like we said a lot of times, you're the only one. Sometimes mm. people want to help you. Sometimes people are testing because they're going to see if you want to give up. Mm. Right? The gatekeepers are going to try you. But like I told them, you know, Brian, I was like, I want all the digital smoke. So as I got older, I'm like, so when people come in the room, especially when you're a high level person and you're not normal there, people are going to try you. They're going to try to test out your yeah. intelligence. What have you done? Are you real? I just yeah. roll up my sleeves and be like, young boy, yeah. you picked on the wrong one today, but I'm about to give you this work. Yeah. I'm about mm. to give you this work because yeah. I'm going to show you I lab every day. I'm going to show you I practice. I'm going to show you I study yeah. my craft. So he mm. talked about yeah. Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil. I'm that in cybersecurity. I'm going to choke you out and make you disappear because I'm going to make you feel <laughs> yes, sir. Because I'm about that life. So that's why I tell yes, people. So my, 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 white, my white people I work with know that. They go, you know that dude, young boy, going to try you. I come in the room stretching. I'm like, I'm old. Let me warm up because I'm about to get him. He going to... As Kevin Hart said, you're going to learn today messing with me. So I, I, I relish that. So it's not hard for me any day because I expect you to challenge me because you're not used to seeing people like me. But I'm going to show right. you I'm the one, which yeah. means I'm not the one to mess with. So let me calm down. Mm. I'm getting hyped up. It's too early. But that's why you're successful, though. Like right. You yes. have that ability to take on that yeah. fight, and yeah. but you're mm. prepared for it. It's not all right. attitude. It's aptitude. Right. You, you prepared for it, and that, and that's the difference. It, it's the same. You you took on, right. you took on a stance, mm-hmm. and you represent that stance with honor. Right. And, and I try right. to do the same thing again. Always being one of the few black people in tech. Yeah, always. On top always. of that, being a combat veteran, we don't see yeah. many. So they have oh, have a perception wow. in their mind about what a combat veteran is. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, we could. You know, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not Rambo. I never was. Right. right. But you got to represent what you stand on with honor. You can't Facts. be fluid in your morals. Facts. And the thing is, too, is I think a lot of, I tell a young, especially young brothers is they fear that confrontation or they like, oh, they're going to try me. i like, no, nah, man, I expect it. If it yeah. don't, I feel like you insulting me. You, I need you to try me because I'm going to show you how great I am. So I, mm. I, I, don't, I don't shy away from it. So when you start, I'm quoting. I'm about that fact. We talk about Pub 1075, HIPAA. FISMA, encryption, FIPS 140-2, whatever you want, I got it. Let's go. So when mm. I come in the room, I'm, I'm warming up like young Muhammad Ali. I'm I'm shuffling, coming in. <laughs> All right, let's go. Who, who, who wants to try me? My boss, oh. my boss, she, cool. I told you, she, why, like, she be pulling, calm down. We got to work with these people. Uh, yes, I'm about to get them. You better tell them don't try me. So I, I, I love it because, too, what people don't realize is that negative is a positive because – I'm going to show you how smart I am. I'm about mm. to show you. I'm about so people now. People know who I am. So when I yeah. lead a meeting, they be like, "Oh, how, how you doing? Why? Because yeah. I just showed out. Because yeah. yeah. you started it. So, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a end yeah. it. So people yeah. think that negative. That's a pot. Everybody know me where I'm at. Because when yeah. somebody will try me, I'm gonna finish you. And everybody's yeah. there. Yeah. So then I, I lean back like anybody else got any other questions? Can mm-hmm. I help you? What can mm-hmm. I do for you? <laughs> then I just, now I'm old. Then I then I call him a little boy, young man. Is there anything else I can help you? Not look him just like that, Damn. young man. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay. Then if you need anything, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you. Oh, you. So, yeah. so I can beat you about. Then I'm I'm a son. You like your little boy, young man. Is there anything else I can help you? With? I'm here for you. Reach out for me. My boss wants to make sure we all successful in this room. So Ooh. let me help you. Ooh. Oh, yeah. man. I, I, I love it. I love it. Let me get to the super chat. Ashton Jamin says, great panel, great conversation. Appreciate the information, fellas. I, I appreciate you, Ashton. Thank you so Thank much you, for Ashton. the super chat. I, uh, I, I I say this, right? Like, you know, PBO is is is, is giving you the game on, on multiple facets here, right? He's talking about it from the Cyrus Kitty space. But think about what he's saying from the bigger picture. Know your stuff. Right. Be be a, a, you know, the best in your in your craft. Right? Be good at what you're 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 capable of in your job. 
that's the biggest piece of it, right? Because here's the thing, right? No matter what position you're going to get into, and, 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 and this is, I would even say this is outside of race too, because no matter what, you're going to get tried. I see people getting tried from all different colors when you go into certain meetings and so forth. And you're not on top of your stuff. If you're not prepared, you're going to end up getting knocked down. You're going to be looking stupid, right? So what PPO is basically saying, guys, is be prepared, be knowledgeable, be an expert in your craft. I, I, I say this. It's hard to be an expert. It's 10,000 hours plus in a certain area. But if you've been doing something for the years, like PBO has been doing, you know, he's been doing cybersecurity for years. He's an expert in that area, right? So uh, and then these are the type of people that you want to follow and, and and get the advice from and learn from as well, too. So, guys, I, I wanted just to, to break that down in the context that he was saying it outside of just the cybersecurity. The, the message here is be good at what you do. And if you be good at what you do or if you be good at with your job, you're going to get a lot of opportunities in life. And you're going to be that person that's constantly called on. You're going to be invited to the room. You're going to get a lot of opportunities in life, guys. So I, I love that you said that, man. Let me add one thing on that. And this is one thing I see. And I'm going to chime in on the other thing you say is when you go to the park, you see brothers hooping eight hours a day. They going mm -hmm. at it. They wake up shooting a thousand three pointers. Right. So mm -hmm. in the sports arena, we we about that grind. You see guys, you see them on a the football field. They're out there mm -hmm. pumping iron. Young boy look like he a Greek guy. But can barely, I, so I said, if you take that focus and move it over to education, IT, or anything mm -hmm. else, we, mm -hmm. we we would dominate. I yep. mean, I've seen yep. guys grow up, because I grew up, I played basketball. You know, when you're little, you got to start on a little boy court and work your way up to the big boy court. You hooping, you trying moves, you taking a thousand shots. What if we move that to education? And you only mm -hmm. need to do eight, you just need to do four. And, yep. and the yep. last thing to add on mm -hmm. that is, when I started a YouTube channel reading and people asking me questions and asking me to do other stuff, you learn on YouTube because you just try, trying to keep up to date. I'm working exactly. on I'm working on my AWS blue team <laughs> presentation. I'm gonna do probably tomorrow. But so the, you, your YouTube channel, just reading articles, do you know, presenting it, people in the chat, you know, they ask you questions. And I always tell my chat is I do this for you. So wherever you want to take it, just put in the chat and we got long as the cybersecurity. Or IT, we, we can go there and we can talk about it. Education right? so, is key. Yep. So yeah, so let's let's grind like we playing a sport. Cause I see young, I drive past the park today. It's cool. There's gonna be ten thousand dudes out there. They running. They got on three hundred dollar Jordans, looking nice. You know, swishing for forty five. Like, dude, can we just put a little of that focus in education? Just 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 a little mm. bit. Just a little bit. There, there you go. There, there, there you go. The Tamara channel. Ways. Go ahead, go ahead, you bro. I was gonna say like approach your job also like uh like black i said about your youtube channel you have to find your niche right like i you know i could be first day on the job the way i present myself people always think i'm in charge right like mm -hmm. people take notice of that or like when i was working dod and we had uh foreign militaries right they would help me because i know how to interact with people so now mm -hmm. when they have a question instead of going to the project lead they're coming to me i'm going to the project lead tell them hey they like this they don't like that right if you're dealing with the Saudis, it's different than dealing with the Brazilians. It's totally different cultures. And so now you got to act as that translator because that's the that's the degree I have. I didn't want to do policy. I didn't want to do programming. I want to do integration. Right. So that that you got to find it. And I did that while I built up my cache of information. Now they put you in charge of something because they want to see your technical skills. But you have more than enough time to prepare for it. So now that's your niche. Then I take a subsystem mm -hmm. and I lock that down. Right now, volunteering for other people. Hey, what do you do? How do you fix that on your? Okay, cool. So now I know your subsystem too. It's just step by step. Just don't try to get it all. You know, step it through. Absolutely, I, I, lo I love I love right. that. Absolutely, I love that. Tamara Wade, let's get to her comment. This is the type of content that is needed. Skip Saturday morning cartoons and HGTV. Black Heights coffee talkers. We're <laughs> Great panel. Right, right. Uh, I, I, I love this. I love this. Joey Q says, currently finishing my degree as a, uh, a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with the concentration in my S at uh, S and HU. That is actually thanks to you, Black Heights and Shane Hummus. Funny enough that you mentioned him earlier. Yes, I'm inspired by Shane. Shane does a fantastic job at uh, 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 really putting content out there that uh, steers people in the right direction from a financial perspective and making the right ultimate college decisions, guys, because college is expensive. College is expensive. And at the end of the day, you should be going to college to uh, try to get ahead 
And that's why we we talk about the degrees that we talk about over here is because these degrees in these careers allow for you to make above the median average income in the United States. And uh, that's going to allow for you to pay back debts if you have them. But also just to support yourself, man, and get to that six figure job, guys. That's what we want. We want money. Uh, uh, blind guy, his wife, their life. Thank you so much for the super chat. Another great content creator. Uh, I love these guys. Go and check them out. Uh, 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 content moderators, um, go ahead and uh, drop their chat in the link as well for people to go and subscribe to them. Uh, but another great couple. Uh, doing some really mm -hmm. fantastic work. I just came across their uh, uh, their channel a couple of weeks ago, and they're doing some great things. And here's the thing, too, that they're actually doing now. Now, if you guys want to hear about marriage and you want to see great yes. couples in marriage, go and check them out. I mean, like, they are just... They, they, they're a lovely couple. I love the, the back and forth between each other. It, it, it's it's a beautiful thing. You want to see a positive marriage. And not every, every marriage, they, I think they're coming out with a series now that talks about, you know, uh, marriage help and stuff like that. Uh, but go and check them out. Uh, a good way for you to learn about marriage if you are in a marriage or if you want to be married one day to learn. Um, thank you so much for the Super Chat, guys. Shift your focus. Shift your grind. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Uh, Anthony Ar Arrington said this. How do you get a job with a how do you get a job with a tech job with a clearance? I had one in the military, but it expired. Ooh, I don't know that one. That's probably for you, Gibran. It might just be inactive. It might it's, mm. it's 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 probably just inactive. It depends on how long ago you got out. Like I got out in two thousand and four. Um, when I checked my clearance, it just says inactive. So they'll mm. probably just have to uh, run run your check again. Um, and it's going to depend ma mainly what your MOS was. Like I was a thirty one uniform. I was combo, so I was dealing with the encryption. Um, so it was a little easier for me, but um, if you had your clearance based off of maybe you were um, military intelligence or maybe a high level uh, infantry guy, then I don't know what that process is, but you probably just have to fill out the packet again. And you know, they're gonna want 10 years back, everything. Addresses, mm -hmm. people, jobs, mm -hmm. income, all of that. You know, they're gonna go through your whole life. Mm -hmm. let, let, me, let me chime on that. I worked for DOD for 11 years, so I had a security clearance. Uh, I I wasn't in the military. The uh, contractor I worked on, like you said, when you got there, I think it was the SB forty one. Like you said, you guys fill out ten years. I had a knack, which was is the lowest of the low levels. But once you fill those out, and if your job required it, a lot of times the consultant company will pay for it, mm -hmm. right? And you got to say you're going to work for them for two years, which in the scheme of things is pretty small. And once you get it too, like you said, then it's easier to move around. So I tell a lot of my students and Jabron, oh, this is you can't have any felonies. You got to keep your background clean. And when you go up to top secret, they be tired of trying to call your teachers. I'm like, dude, I'm old. My teachers are dead. They be trying to talk to your neighbor. My they went to my brother. neighbor's house. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you and your neighbor getting at it, you could have a problem because they going to come see your neighbor. <laughs> Because one of my best friends, he went in. I said, I, I think I said his niece lived with him. He said, oh, you should have told him they moved out. So that made the process longer. They go in depth. And he actually had to take the polygraph because he was actually going into the Pentagon. Uh, mm. So it, so it, I got to word this way. So if you have a top, top secret, because I work with Navy SEALs, those guys weren't the smartest guys, but they the only guys could go in the computer room. So they would right. go in the computer room and call back out. What do I do? Because <laughs> like, you need that level of security to get in those buildings. Like I worked with like three Navy SEALs and a Ranger, and they were top secret where they took a polygraph. So if you're going mm. in the Pentagon or some of those, you just can't be a regular guy to get in there. So mm. they go in there, they let them call out, and you be like, okay, what's the thing? <laughs> what's on the monitor? So you got to talk to them. So those security clearance are super important. You can easily make six figure and just because you can get into the, the Pentagon room that nobody else can go in. Yep. Mm, mm, mm. Very yeah. important. I love it. I love it. Uh, Anthony said he got out in 1998. He was a oh, supply guy. Yeah. Mm. And, and he said he expired answer. in 2005. Look at, um, look at, um, I don't know what you're looking for currently. Look, look for, um, look at NAVS up. Look at Navy Supply. Um, they need supply guys. You know, the supply chain is crap right now. So, mm -hmm. especially if you're in IT now, man, listen, you're a high demand, bro. Somebody's gonna pay for it. Go yeah. look at Navy Supply. Um, they they got they got stations all over the place. So look at Navy Supply. Mm. And King says top secret clearance with a poly and CISP gets you two hundred K. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a good salary right there. 
That's a fantastic <laughs> seller. That's a fantastic seller. Well, guys, you know what? We are at the two hour mark, man. I, I was expecting this to be an hour. Uh, but you know what? When you, when you have good brothers that can come on the show, chop it up. And, and you got people watching, right? <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give us another five minutes, guys. If you have any questions in the chat, because I like to do this, right? At the end of the day, uh, we are providing valuable information, guys. We are, we are, we are no, you know, know-it-alls, but we are, you know, experts in our field of study, right? And uh, even then, it's hard to call yourself an expert because there's so much yeah. to learn, right? So, you know, uh, uh, we, we're trying to give you guys uh, a good understanding of of it from the our perspective, and 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 that's it. And guys, the the original show was just about you know, choosing the right people who you're going to get information from. That's basically what it is. Because if you listen to the wrong person, they're going to steer you in the wrong direction. And at the end of the day, you know, I say this all the time, look at receipts, guys, you know, make sure that people uh, uh, who, who you're getting information from have done it. And all, all of us up here, we've done it and we're still doing it, right? So if, if you're in that space, we are the type of people that you really want to follow and, and taking advice from and getting coaching and stuff like that from. I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw this up here. I'll let uh, uh, you, uh, Jabron and uh, PBO uh, answer this question. I'm going to take a big bathroom break uh, and I'll be right back, okay? Yes, sir. I need to wash my Oh, I understand. I recently switched to a business major. So I did information science and technology uh, with the with the concentration and uh, implementation, and so I could either pick to uh, write policies, integrate, or do programming. I told I chose integration because with the integration piece I could have went wherever. Like my first internship I did was a help desk, second internship I did was security, um, network security, and the third one I did was um, database administration, and so I I did those uh different pieces so i worked in the field a business analyst but i also do web design and so like once you have a base level knowledge you'll have your job and then if you have another passion that you want to study you can create a business based off of that if that's if that's what you want to do like i don't know what it's like to work from nine to five come home and chill it's just never been my life so i always had to have something to keep me going so building websites and then say okay they got square they got wix they got all these other plug and play ways to build a website so where can you add value well now you got to understand the coding and then when you understand the coding it's easier for you to do custom sites and it's easier for you to do things like seo because you know what google's looking for you know what they're um, looking for in a website you're able to go into the code and put it in accordance for what google's looking for so it's all going to be dependent on what you study and what you and what you're into and then once you get your feet set in that field, the sky's the limit, really, because IT is not disconnected. It all It's all connected. So you just master your little piece of it, and you can really go anywhere with it. Yes. Go ahead. I was going to chime in. And, I, of course, Black Heights going to – if you look at Black Heights' uh, <clears throat> catalog – he talks about a lot of just he has system analysts. I think he did project management. Mm -hmm. He did programming. I laugh because I think I've done a majority of the stuff he posts. I've done. <laughs> so, and two is, I, I, I obviously I'm thinking you're young. So when you pick MIS, when you actually get in the field, you, your job's going to kind of rotate you when you're young. Like he you said, you're going to start off as coding. I don't like that. Let me try system analyst. I don't like that. Try networking. And two, as part of the business is you can manage the programmers, which which mm. I suck at. Mm. I, I tried mm. it a couple of times. Um, so it, MIS, look out there. There's a, a lot of different ways and, and a lot of different job titles to get into. And two, as you get in there and you start excelling at your job because like, you're good at it and you're grinding, it, they're going to promote you to what you're good at. Then you're going to kind of, it's going to kind of lead you down a path. you either going to like it and go, okay, I'm killing it here or I want to yeah. switch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So you so you just get in it. I will I will find something you think you would like coding, cybersecurity, do it. But when you get in, the, when you actually start doing it, I, I I hung out with a lot of programmers. I love programming. Most people hate programming because they don't want to sit in one spot for 10 hours mm -hmm. thinking you forgot a semicolon. That's why your shit's not working, man. <laughs> Logic errors. <laughs> Facts. Facts. So 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 you're gonna get out there and grind. So I, I would pick a concentration, but I wouldn't be married to it because too, once you get in your job for a couple of years, nobody ever asked me my what my GPA and nobody's ever asked me where I went. 
So now mm. it's like, can you do it? Do you got those skills? And are you working on your craft? Like he mm. says, I don't, I don't come home, especially now I'm divorced. Don't nobody want me. So I just come on, work on my YouTube channel, <laughs> eat a good steak because I'm fat, because I make six figures and just have a good life, man. I'm working on my AWS file, you know. See, what you want to be like Black Heights, man. We need good brothers with good families to build a good community. I'm just not that guy, man. I'm old. I might date, you know, somebody not appropriate for me. I'm that guy, man. But we, we need more black heights in here, though. That's why you need to lead more towards black height. Now, cybersecurity, I'm your guy. Relationships, that, you don't want to follow me, bro. That's not what I do. I'm going to stay in my lane. So we're we going to give you the black eyes, though. Oh, man. Get in there and get to grinding. I got faith in you. Reach out to us if you need it. I'm going to turn it over to the family man, Mr. Heights himself. <laughs> Oh, I, I I love you, PBL man. You you <laughs> you're hilarious, man. So so check, he recently switched to uh, business major, and uh, he, he needs to pick a concentration. Yeah, I I think I think Jabron and, and and PBO is is you know they've given you a lot of advice here, and that's the thing, right? You just got to find out what 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 you're interested in at that point in time, and you know you, that's the thing about MIS. You, you're going to have a lot of opportunities, and you're going to take a class in database administration, system analysis, programming, whatever you like the majority the most, right? Then you want to gravitate towards that, right? That's so when when I was an MIS major, <clears throat> you know, we didn't have necessary concentrations. You're just an MIS major. Now today they have like data database or, or data analysis and all sort of stuff, right? Uh, but I chose the programming part of it, become a software engineer because that's what I thrived in. I was a good coder in my classes, my coding classes. I was I wanted to get my assignments done the same night that we got them. Right. So I said, OK, well, I'm going to be a software engineer because I think that is a great uh, a skill set that's going to be needed throughout my career. And that's what I gravitated towards. Right. Uh, I also like the project management and stuff like that. And um, later on, became a project manager. So gravitate towards what you have a liking when you're going through your courses, what you have a liking when you're, you know, if, if you're doing any side projects and um, and what what just gives you that that energy, right, to move forward. And that's what you want to, you know, go towards from a concentration. But then again, here's the thing. You may get into it and get into your first job and you say, OK, well, I, I love programming like I did. I was sitting in a development organization, sitting down for eight hours of the day. I hated that. I hated sitting down in a development organization coding for eight hours in a day. Right. I didn't find my 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 liking until I went over to the professional services organization where I would code. But I would actually talk to customers about requirements and designs and all that other stuff, the system analysis piece of it. So you really you, you're going to have an opportunity to explore. And whenever you find your passion at or you're liking in it, that's what you want to explore even more. So I hope that uh, 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 answers your question, my man. Um, <clears throat> Joey Q says, oh, oh, hold on. Let's go back to Brandon. Brandon wrote, says, shout out to you all. I know my son, I show my son these videos because it was rare when I was uh, a kid to see black men in tech. Much respect. Wow. I, 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 I love that, my man. Absolutely. Share as much as possible. Uh, PBO is awesome. <laughs> Agreed. I yeah, absolutely. Yes. Tony Q said, I appreciate the talk, guys. What would be better, Arizona State uh, University online as in Master of Science or apply for Pace University Information Systems MBA in person? Want to be an IT manager slash consultant? Ooh, who wants to take that one? Or you guys, who wants to take that one? I'll, so it depends if the degrees are the same, right? Like mm -hmm. if your degree doesn't say online and it adds more flexibility to your life, I don't know if it really matters. Mm -hmm. um, I know there used to be a stigma about online, um, you know, MBAs and things like that, but I think that's going away. And I'm, I'm not 100 percent on this, Joey, but like so I went to Penn State Harrisburg. My degree says the Pennsylvania State University. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. So if the degree is the same then Arizona State gives you the flexibility that you need to work and kind of work at your own pace, then I think you should do that as opposed to going in person, especially now during COVID, you might end up online anyway. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not, it just it depends on what, what what are you looking to get out of it? Mm -hmm. good, good point. PBO, you want to uh, yeah. uh, chime in on that? Yeah, uh, I'm with you, Brian, and I'm one of those old guys. If For some reason, when you go to school online, the gatekeepers I hang out with, they hate that for some reason. Yeah. But I agree with him, it, it's changing. My thing, what I would do is he want to be a management consultant. I'm sure he's talking about uh, the big dogs, you know, uh, Deloitte and those guys. 
I will go on their website and, and they list the jobs on there and what the qualifications they're looking for. Mm-hmm. So is that mm-hmm. a um so I, I, I would do that. They call it informational interview. The, those guys love doing that. Um mm-hmm. I have a super technical background. So for me, I always build it from technology up. So I think Black Heights can more do it for more of a management standpoint. So they really want you to do that before you manage those guys. Most of those managers, I don't think they picked out a management, put those schools, especially Deloitte. They're like this cutthroat in-house. You got to yeah, step on top of each other yeah, to are. get to the top. Because I worked for this with one of the guys that was on my channel. He worked for Deloitte. He said it was crazy. He mm-hmm. said they would step on each other. They would damn near set you up to fail because everybody's trying to get the manager partner where you make 400000 So they're expecting him with kids to work 16 hours a day because most people come straight out of college. They going to grind and they expect you to grind. They was mm-hmm. like, well, I need to go home and check on my son. They was like, oh, but don't you want to stay? They were giving him hip. Hence, he was like, no, I'm not staying. He goes, they said, okay. They fired him two weeks later. So that you need to understand what their life's about. You can sign mm. up for, for that type, for that type mm. of uh, consulting work. Yeah, so so there's there's multiple aspects of, of of consulting, and and let me let me just go through the first piece of the, you know, what would be better, right? And, and and I don't think we can make that recommendation for you, but what I would say this: when I think about Arizona State and I think about Pace University, I think about a brand, and Arizona State has a better brand, right? Obviously, whether it's online or not, but and and, and here's the thing: it it really depends on your type of learning. A lot of people don't like to be online. Right. I'm a type of person I would rather be in the thick of it. Right. So all my universities, when I went and got my MBA, I, I like to be on campus because I like to be in front of people. Right. So choose whatever is best for you. And I would say if you are the type of person that's able to learn online, then probably go with Arizona State. If you're the type of person that needs to be in there in person, go with Pace University. When it comes down to consulting, they typically look and gravitate towards bigger schools that has a good brand behind them. So if you're talking about Deloitte, you're talking about Accenture, any of those guys like PBO is talking about, they typically go with the university that has a better brand. But it doesn't mean that you can't get in from a university that doesn't have a good brand. Right. It's at that point in time, it's really about connections, who you know, and what you've done in your skill set and what you've done from a, a job perspective before. So. I can't tell you uh, what what is is best. Uh, I can just give you my personal experience on about brands, right? And um, and 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 give you some advice on whatever your learning style is. Now, becoming an IT manager and a consultant, like PBO said and Jabron said, you guys, at the end of the day, you're not going to just come out of school becoming a manager, right? Unless here's the thing, right? Let's just say you are a person that uh, is getting your master's and you haven't been in the tech field. If you've managed people before and you uh, are just now getting into tech with a master's degree, there is a opportunity for you to take on a management role, but it's gonna be very slim. You're gonna wanna get into some sort of uh, individual contributor role first, a team lead role, before you actually typically will go into a manager of technical people. That's just how it is. That's how it is in the tech space. You have to have done the job in order for you to get into that manager role. I became my first manager as a team lead as a software engineer. And the only reason I was able to do that because I was a software engineer, senior software engineer, master software engineer, became a team lead of a group of engineers. Um, but outside of that, right? Um, uh, it's going to be hard for you just to go into a tech field uh, with no tech experience becoming a manager. So try to get it uh, as an individual contributor, climb the ladder. You can do it relatively quick because you have that soft skills and then uh, manage a group of technical people once you become very good at something. Um, let's go here. Uh, PBL says, uh, uh, Brandon Rose, we appreciate you. Absolutely, we do. Blind guy's wife says, dang, I can never chat the way I want to on Saturdays. Always cooking breakfast, cleaning kids. <laughs> but this show is like a TV show the way you guys tell real life stories related to success. And, you know, I, 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 I appreciate you, blind guy's wife in their life. We, uh, uh, you know, Saturday mornings are busy. It's the time that I actually can can get some stuff done, typically early in the mornings before uh, everybody is, is, is involved in their day. But we appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming in. And, and, and chopping it with us as, as nice. well too, and, and sharing your 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 yeah. platform with us as well too. Nice. You, you guys do a, a wonderful job at balancing, and and their parents as well too, guys. I mean, like that's the thing, right? Go watch couples who were raising kids and who have raised kids before as well too. Uh, the Black Cyber Network says being independent of facility is the best. I don't, uh, you guys, 
being independent of a facility. Oh, so is that like remote work? Oh, or, independent of a facility. Or, or I thought you were talking about learning? he was like a, a solo practitioner consultant or something. I did that for a while, so I couldn't. Uh, Black Cyber, can you uh <laughs> break that? that down? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that that would be good. I um, it, it could be just internal chats as well too that people yeah. have been talking about. But um, oh, I got hold a question. For, I, I got a question for you, Black Heights. Yes, sir. On the other thing, do you think remote work is going to be common? So now you're going to have to have a different skill set in the world? Because like you said, you used to being on site and that's how we operate. But now since the pandemic, I'm pushing back. I told my boss, hey, we made it work five days without being on site. Let's keep being on site. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, so is that going to be a new skill set, a different skill set? We're going to have to move a little different. Like I'm taking on the show. I'm, I'm throwing out the black eyes. <laughs> no, th that's that's a fantastic question, PBO. Right. I think I think remote work is here to stay. I think uh, employees who have tasted it have are demanding it more. They, they're demanding the flexibility. You see a lot of people out here that that really are able to get their job done and do other stuff and have a better work life balance. And I think companies are starting to see that. You look at some of the major tech companies. Mm -hmm. The reason why they continue to push their you know start back or office dates is not just because of the pandemic it's also because of the demands from the employees now when it comes to skill sets i still think the the foundational skill set that you need in person still is what you need online as well too how to communicate with people uh, uh uh you know the same sort of body language the soft skills especially now because even though you're remote you still are on camera a lot of the times as well too right. right and people can see your face right so those skills that you learn in person which are, i think are core because soft skills aren't something that you can read about in a book this is something that you actually have to have experience oh. in and take right. some lumps and bruises and get bust right. upside the head a lot of the times in order for you to learn the right way to doing things um, I think I think what you're going to find out is that as we continue to work online and remote and if you're not you're seeing a lot of people, a lot of that is going to regress. So soft skills are going to be that much more important for the people, uh, you know, for the people who had that exposure. Right. And, and, and I think they're saying it right now based on statistics, guys, uh, uh, soft skills is, is the reason why a lot of companies are losing money today. And it's going to continue to be that way. Mm -hmm. And it's the number one reason to have success in life and just about every single thing in your life, whether you are you know, a kid growing up or you are a person in a professional world. So I think overall, if as long as, you know, we stay in a remote uh, a working environment, I think we're going to lose the connectiveness of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to a human interaction perspective. So, you know, there's, there's, here's the thing though, just because you're not doing it with your coworkers, you still have parents, you have friends, you have neighborhoods, you have communities. So communities are going to be that much more important because then you can develop your soft skills in your communities and stuff like that. Right. So um, I, I say this PBO, if it goes to the skills, I, I say uh, 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 remote work is going to cause even more of a lack of soft skills, just like you see how kids are growing up now on devices and they don't have it, right? Uh, and it's gonna be that much more important later to where we're probably gonna be a generation that are still gonna be working in our late 60s and 70s because we have that. We have the ability oh, to connect with people. We're gonna be able to sell people because we know how to communicate the right way and so forth. Whereas the previous generation, they're gonna be robots, right? You know, transactional. Right. So that's just that's that's my opinion, on it, sir. Well, last last question. I'm like, I'm taking them. I have problems uh, managing Generation Z because they're soft because I get excited. I might yell at one. Of, I yelled at a 23 year old. He's six foot two. I thought the dude was going to cry. I had to bring it <laughs> off I'm like, dude, I'm excited, man. I, I'm that guy. I didn't mean it. It's not personal. I'm here to help you be better. I'm not mm. trying to attack you. So I had to bring him in and coach him back up because I saw the look on his face. I mm -hmm. thought he was gonna cry. Mm -hmm. I'm from yep. DOD, man. He could tell you half the DOD's military, they'd cuss your ass out. Yep. <laughs> like grown men yep. really cussing you out. And yep. I just was like, okay, that's how I so I kind of yelled at him. I got excited. We were late. He wasn't doing what I did. So I, I got, you know, I kind of got a little aggressive. He he almost cried. So I like, okay, now nah, yep. man, we ended as a team. I'm here to support you, man. But I need you to get on point. I got to yeah. yell at you a little bit because, you know, this is the timeout. This is the helmet generation. You can't let them ski up, you know, skin up their knees or nothing. So I'm struggling <laughs> with this generation, man. I'm old. I'm struggling with these young dudes, man. Hey, 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 and, and, and that's the thing too, PBO, right? If there's, 
And, and that's why we also need to refresh in our skills and leadership because it's it's so changing. It's so changing the the way how we were led before. They we were we were we were that we were the group that grew up with getting our butts cut, right? We were the ones who would get spankings and switches, right? right? That that's no longer. I don't beat my kids. I don't. Oh, I've I do. never spanked I my do. kids. I'm, I'm spanking. I ain't, you come, Granddaddy John spanking. You coming over here? You got to sign a waiver. So Black Ice, you can't leave your kids with me. You got to sign a waiver, player. I'm still switching them. I don't know. I, I have to go to court. I got a lawyer. I'm still switching kids. Like it's, it's 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 different these days, right? Okay. So overall, I, I I say this, right? Like as as we get older, we also have to uh, relearn some of the things that that we need to relearn, especially from a leadership and a management perspective. And yeah. that just that that just takes time. That just takes you know us consistently uh, uh, educating ourselves and pushing ourselves to be better every single day. So yeah, I mean, like it, it, it's it's. It's different. It's it's certainly different, man. It's certainly to honest, different. To, to be honest, what I've done is I just advocate to leave. What my main job is now, I advise CEOs and stuff from an advisory standpoint because I mm -hmm. just don't really like managing people. When I get paid more than a lot of managers because I'm in the C-suite advising me from DOD, you got to do the NIST, FISMA, Distastigs. I, I know that stuff forwards and backwards. So I'm always in those rooms. So to be honest, I don't even run a lot of teams anymore because them dudes are soft, man. I'm liable to punch you in your throat, man. I, I, don't know <laughs> I need you to get because if you mess up, I'm getting fired. If I lose my right. six figure job, we yeah. fight, player. Because right. now yeah. you you interfering with my food and my grandkids' food, so so we could really fight. I'm I, I, I can fight. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I so 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 guys, if if PBO is basically saying he's not a manager. <laughs> He's a, he's a leader. He's a leader and individual contributor that, you know, does a lot of the consulting for others. There's and, and that's fine. Know your lane. I'm glad that you say that, people, right. because I'm the type of person that I'm more of a manager. I love to develop people. That's why I have the platform. Right. I love to develop people. But, you know, it, it, as far as the technical piece of it anymore, I choose not to be technical like that. anymore. That's what you I prefer me. the I other side. That's what yeah, you call me. I got you. I got you. I got I got you, Jabron, Gabe. I have a whole bunch of you're absolutely right. Right. So so that, that's that I love the development of people. And you just have to find what your passion is and, and you stick with that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is, is knowing yourself, though, PBO, you hit it right. You you, you you know yourself. You know what you're good at. You know what you're capable of. Just don't you know, I tell people all the time, don't try to be somebody that you're not. Right. Don't try to be somebody you're not. I got a quick story. So. My current job, a lady from DOD invited me to work there. They hired a new CISO. So I write okay, but I don't write well. I get bullet points. So he was like like Black Heights. He kept trying to stretch me. So I I gave him this thing. He says, well, you know, you should write it out more, and you should dig down into more. His boss comes around, which I'm tight. I'm like, big boss, do you let me write stuff like that? She goes, oh, no, you suck at that. I said, see, man, I'm in my lane, man. <laughs> I don't try to do nothing. I'm not capable of doing. I tell them, you pay me a lot of money to do these five things. I'm great at these five things. I don't want you to wait, waste the company money, man. I, I'm yep. great at these things, man. Don't don't have me stretch out. I'm too old, man. I'm not trying to stretch. <laughs> she pays me to do these five. She start laughing. She goes, yeah, he sucked. I would never let him do that. I like, Dude, I'm old. I know what I'm good at, man. I, I've been doing this a long time. I'm not trying to stretch. You pay me this salary, and I'm going to give you the best bang for the buck. Let me do what I do. He start rolling his eyes. He goes, yeah, you know the big boss. I was like, yeah, she hired me, man. She brought me here to do this job. I don't want to waste your money, player. Don't be trying to stretch me, man. I'm in my fifties. <laughs> I'm not trying to stretch unless it's, unless it's cloud or something. I want to stretch on for my benefit. I, I'm not writing a thesis, man. That's not what I do, man. We got technical writers for that. That's not what I do. Mm -hmm. That's that's yourself, that's too. Yep. You know yourself too. Wrong. Like when I go to a, uh, a you know job, whatever. Honestly, guys, I'm super professional. Mm. Super, mm. super professional to, to the fact where it makes people uncomfortable, but I don't care because I know like Professor Black Ops, I know my attitude, I know my temperament. So it's best for me to overdo it on a professional end than to let you take me for soft and say something that's out of pocket. Mm. Everything is yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Negative. Roger that. I'm on that. Da, da, da. And they're like, wow, like you're so professional. Like, yes, sir. Do you do anything mm. for fun? Yes, sir. Like, because yeah. I don't want you to <laughs> overstep your bounds, right? Like, if we didn't come up the same way, you know, like, the way you play might not be the way I play. And and, and my parents always told me, you go to work to work. If you make right. friends, great, right? But that's not the goal. And so mm -hmm. after a while, you start to implement those soft skills, 
mm-hmm. and this is how it works in your favor. Now they feel special because mm-hmm. you're actually talking mm-hmm. to them now, mm-hmm. right? You're super mm-hmm. professional with everyone else, but now you're actually talking to them. They're like, wow, you mm-hmm. know, and they could be in a higher position. It doesn't matter. They're like, yeah, Jabron has sons. They're <laughs> like, who? He told you that? Like, yeah, <laughs> Jabron has sons. Like, right, they feel right. like they got a secret. So, you know, but it's knowing yourself because I'm, you know, I'm I'm an old soldier, so I'm part intellect, part Neanderthal. And so, like, you could bring out whichever side of that. So we just want to go super far on the professional side because I feel like I just, you know, you got to always represent more than just yourself in those situations. Mm, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Let's let's do this. Let's get to Anthony real fast. And I think this one's for you, Jabron, and, and PBO. What are the basic certifications for cybersecurity, and how long does it take to get up to six <laughs> figures? That's PBO. That's that's ah, PBO. Seven I figure got, PBO. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I could do it. The, the, the basic security is going to be security plus, right? Yeah. That's the basic. Then once you you need five years to sit for the CISP. So once you get the CISP five years, if you do everything you're supposed to do directly in five or seven years, if you're directly on point and everything goes and unfolds the way you need it to unfold, you can make six figures. So like we talked about, you're a programmer or, or a Cisco router or you're doing some policies and procedures because Cybersecurity is a huge area. Even within it, you got to pick your specialty, right? Mm. To make six figures is easy if you become a consultant like I am and you work on a federal contract. Because number mm-hmm. one is, especially like we talked about, if you have a, if you get a secret clearance, you're gonna make that money because consultants get money from companies for you to be an expert, and they pay for your expertise, right? Mm. So when you're a consultant. And you've been in that, whatever the bill rate is, if you're a top consultant, you get between 70 and 80% of that. Most people get 50% of that because they don't really know what the bill rate. A a big bill rate for a cybersecurity consultant that's a senior is probably $140 an hour. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So you might get half of that, which is 70, right? So if you have your skill set, right? But the uptell on the other thing is when you're at that, that company really doesn't care about you. You're an FTE and a resource. So mm-hmm. when I go on a consultant, I work for a small co- consulting company. So I'm on a project. They just told me they're not resigning me next June, right? So my boss came to me all sad, goes, oh, I talked to the CIO. He said, they're not going to extend your contract next June. True story. I told the guys I work with the following week was, they're not going to resign me. Number one, we're cutting people. We're cutting budgets. I'm probably the highest paid with my company bill right on there. I've been there 10 years. My time's up. You always want to jump early. Like that. So I've seen that coming, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So you've got, so when you make that type of money, that kind of consult, if that contract lose or they lose something, they're going to fire you. I've seen grown man walked out of build, building crime because they didn't expect it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Your salary is attached to that, that contract. When that contract ends, unless you work for one of the big four people, you're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's the thing about contracts that is right, that so, is about contracts yep right so, so like jabron is i'm friendly but i know what this is if they lose money in the country i'm the first one fired i'm not mad i've seen people throw chips yeah. this is a business yep I, mm-hmm. I, i've been in this game way too long so i started looking like six months ago i'm like okay let me reach out to my contracts new new, new budgets coming out in january so i got my track shoes on january i'm be running somewhere right but it's a business so don't take it first but what i'm saying is when you make big money you do that stuff I seen 70 people, the contract hit, they marched them out. People ask me why I got one picture and a couple folders. Yep. I expect you to fire me. I want my box to be light. I'm just gonna pick my two folders up. I'm all pick up my little laptop. I'm out. I'm gonna kiss you. Thanks for the th- thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I'm not mad. I know what this is. It's yep. not personal, yep. it's business. So don't don't confuse the two. They could be friendly without, but they'll march you out tomorrow if they lose money. Mm. So I, I I say this, right? So I'm not going to talk about certifications here, but I just say, how long does it take to get up to six figures? I'll just say this in IT. It really depends on what role you get into, right? From cybersecurity's perspective, I'm like, you, you can become a network engineer and so forth. You could be making six figures within a matter of, you know, years. It, it took me, I think it took me about, you know, as a, as a IT, a software engineer, it took me about three to four years in order for me to hit six figures as a software engineer, right? So it, it really depends on the path, what company, what your choices are, because here's the thing, right? Once you get into the field, 
you got to remember there's so much more growth that you're going to have, right? And that's where you really have to leverage your soft skills and kind of talk about, if you guys go back to the video, how to get promoted fast, where I actually shared how you can get promoted fast and make that six figures. That's going to be the hardest part right there. And, and, th and that's using your soft skills, building relationships, being seen and so forth. The, the, having the hard skills and getting a certification and getting a role, that's the easy part. Getting up to that six figures is going to be the part that you're going to have to be likable. You're going to have to, you know, take on some stuff that you're not going to want to do a lot of the times. So you're going to have to um, kiss up the people sometimes that you don't want to kiss up to at the end of the day. But you're doing it for your own benefit. Play the game, guys. Play the game. Um wow. I work with a lot right. of people I don't like <laughs> in person in real life. Same I work here. with a lot of people I don't like. I'll be wanting to punch them in the throat. <laughs> I'll be professional. And if you don't want people to get in the way of, of what you're trying to do, your greatness and your money. And I wasn't making six figures because I was came from a poor environment. So when somebody gave me 80, I thought I was killing it. Yeah, my right mom, there. once again, my, my dad was a janitor and my mom was a maid. So when I started making 40 dollars an hour, man, they my mom prayed to God. She thought I was better than blessed, you know. Then when I got in the river, I'm like, I'm underpaid. I, I need some more money. But <laughs> so you got to reach out and figure out what you're worth. And I think that's out there more. Black Heights give you that knowledge of what jobs are worth. And two, with Glassdoor and Red Door, they have a lot of information out there for you. LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn as well is another one. Uh, which tech fields are better suited for remote work? Uh, just about every single tech field. We found that out through through the uh, pandemic, Anthony. Just about every single tech field. I, I don't know I, unless you have to be inside of a, a facility and you're like part of a maintenance crew or something like doing doing tech repair. Every single IT job, just about I I think every one of them just can be remote. That's just how it is. We've learned that over the last year and a half. Companies had to do that. They had to force themselves to do that. Now, if you're part of a help desk and you have to do procurement of getting people laptops and stuff yeah. like that, you may have to be in a local office here and there, be once in a while. But guys, now you can ship it, right? You ship it to people's Bye. homes. That's what that's what IT professionals have been doing, right? So I, just about every single career uh, uh, is is ha, IT career has the ability for you to work remotely. We were paying them um, to drop ship them on people's our help desk throws them in their trunk. We pay them mileage and they just drop them on their doorstep, call them and they come out and reach it. They actually yeah. like driving. So and two is uh between teams, especially Microsoft Teams, um, and that's flawless. You can add people, we on conference call, we drawing, we sharing documents. So from that point, I, I don't like you said, I don't know what Josh might tea that you couldn't do from home. Because between WebEx teams, Google Play, they all have shared documents. So, mm, mm. so Luol says my school offers a degree in data analytics and business computer information systems and choosing one is pretty difficult because they are both pretty good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They're fantastic. Data is the features. Computer information systems is the core and the technical pieces of it. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of overlap. Do you have any suggestions? Um, talk to people in both in both fields in your school. Right. See who uh, talk to people who are data analytics majors and talk to people who are computer information systems majors. And you make the choice based on what you hear from those guys and what your interests are. I would say look at the curriculum, though. Uh, uh, personally, if I was to look at both, I, I think they're 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 they're, they're a tie. I'm like and, and there's overlap because you can major in computer information systems with a focus in data analytics. Right. And you can be a, a major in data analytics with a focus on computer information systems. Computer information systems is a bit more broader. Data analytics is more and more focused and more niche based. It depends on what what you're looking for. But both are fantastic choices, I would say. And you know that, you know, that. I got I got some radical. I bet you she needs a hundred hours to graduate, and I bet both of those are about thirty hours a piece. I would just do both of them. Mm, mm, just, mm, if you can do both mm. of them with the same amount of money, yeah. They, there's it's, it's, it's some of it's gonna be a little overlap. So yep. instead of being sixty or seventy, probably fifty together. I would just do them both. Yep. Mm, good um, point. Very good point. I, I, but I'm a bunch again. You hear me? I'm about that intellectual smoke. I, I'm confused, and I told myself I'm great every day I wake up. I was just doing both, man. Mm -hmm. Francis says, I am thinking of major in MIS with a minor in coding. What do you think about management consulting plus a background of coding? Is that a recipe for success? Yes, absolutely. I mean, like that's that's basically a background that I have uh, MIS with a computer science minor. Right. So what do you think about management consulting plus a background of coding? 
management consulting is perfect, right? You think about management consulting, you're just going to be an expert in your field. Uh, it, it's it's a great field to be in. I say this, it's an opportunity for you to make a lot of money. You're going to have to travel a lot. You're going to have to work long hours though, right? So right. that's the the the, the trade off. But it's a, a a field that you're going to get a lot of exposure to uh, executives, right? Depending on what company that you work for. It's, if you work for some of the bigger consulting companies, um, management consultants, they are some of the highest paid IT professionals that exist out there. And, um, you know, uh, I think with the MIS degree and the background in coding, that would be spectacular. Okay. Uh, Tamara Way says she passed. Uh, okay. Perfect. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Reddit is up in flames over IT degrees versus CS degrees. Long story short, both can be good, but they say CS is more sought after and respected opinions. You know, Reddit has its own opinions, right? I, I say this. I have a combination of both. I, I have a combination of both, right? With uh, majoring in MIS and having a CS minor. Uh, people are gonna say something. People are always gonna say the CS degrees are more sought after because they are more technical, right? They are high in demand. It's, it's you know, but, but I would say the earning potential for CS majors aren't like that of MIS professionals because MIS professionals are gonna have the opportunity to do things like sales. And don't get me wrong, you can be a computer science engineer and, and software engineer, but a lot of those guys don't go into sales. They just are end up being some of the, the technical experts in their field. And if you're in that back, I would say uh, back office, you're not gonna be some of the highest paid in a company. That's exactly what it is, right? So uh, I say this all the time. I think you go towards the skill set that best fits you as a person. If you want to be on the technical side, go with CS. It's perfect for you. If you want to be on the business side or have a combination of both, go with MIS um, or something in the IT organization. Can I chime in on um, that? Because I, I live that. Can I right. chime in on that? Um, sure my, my undergraduate is in computer science. I work with a lot of elitist technical people. Black Heights is 100% correct because I live that. I was in the back office for years and I figured out to make money, I need to actually go talk to customers. I need to get in mm -hmm. there with the CEOs. So when you're on a technical track, once you get to senior and you senior uh, project leader, you got a team, there's really nowhere else for you to go. Yeah. You, you're going to cap out. There's, there's nowhere to go. No. And two is a lot of those guys should be in the back office because half those dudes on the spectrum, they looking down. Yes. I told you, I yell at the dude, he almost cried. So they should be in the back office, but those guys on Reddit, they're right because they're technically they're technically elitist. So they have yes. to take a similar. They told they know I've done a similar where I'm moving chips and ones and bytes. So technically, that is the elite. But if you're talking about money, you got to talk to customers. You got to go get business. You got to sell because you get you get part of the sales to make revenue. That's why I left the back office. Mm, mm. So so more, oops. Go ahead, Sorry. bro. Go ahead. No, go ahead, sir. Companies are going to always value you more when you bring in money versus maintaining money. Mm. You're in that back office, what you maintain the money. But if you can bring in more money, they're going to always promote you because you could always grow them. And, and business is competition, just like sports. Like you were talking earlier about sports. Business is competition. It's about mm. the win. Mm. You know, you see mm. these these billionaires, they don't retire. They, they're smashing forever. You see Apple with those new chips, they're smashing forever. They don't care right. that the current chips are already better. They want to make mm. better, better ones, right? So mm. you got to bring in that money. So that's always going to be more. And there are there is a lot of elitism in uh, IT, especially with you know computer science, and it, it's a it's a great technical field, you know. But but like PBO said, you drop those dudes off somewhere they couldn't find their way home, you know. So <laughs> you're, 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 you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, like yeah, I, I I work with brilliant dudes with no common sense. I promise. Right. You. These yep. dudes be yep. brilliant. Yep. I'm like. Dude, how you come up the algorithm? Next thing I know, this dude can barely tie a shoe, man. But these yeah. dudes be, I mean, Got coming up with some of the, Yeah, these <laughs> dudes be brilliant, man. I, I promise you, I work with a dude I was on the spectrum, man. He gets mad. They have to send him home for a couple weeks because he's like out of sorts, man. He's mm -hmm. like the yep. accountant, man. Like we moved some and he just got mad. <laughs> I'm like, dude. So, but he's technically excellent. They bag me, but he's never going to go in management. He's never going to make the top dollar because he can't talk to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So let, let me. I, I, I'm going to share something. I typically uh, 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 don't, you know, do this, but I'll just share something with you guys real fast. Like, here, let me let me throw this up there. You guys see that? That's 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 what a sales professional can make. This is my recent pay stub, guys. What I've did all year so far. You can you can make that as a sales professional, as an MIS major, because you are not back office. 
So I'll just share that with you right there. You guys see that number right there, 490 already, right? I pay more taxes than a lot of you guys have paid, paid all year, Bye. right? So so I'm just I'm just going to say it. it. At the end of the day, here, here's a person that you're talking to that makes over a half a million dollars a year, right? It's the Bye. year is not even over with. That's just year to date, right? Yeah, so, you got months left. And I got months left, right? right? So, so here's the thing, guys. That's just that's just what it is. So when when people say, okay, well, don't get me wrong, you can make you can make that amount of money as a CS professional as well, but guys, getting towards on the management side and leaning up, that's where you're really going to make the money at, guys. That's why I tell people all the time: gain your the soft skills are important. If as long as you can build your soft skills, climb the ladder, manage people, you're going to be in the higher paying roles. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to be at risk a lot of the times too, right? Because at the end of the day, you're responsible for a lot, but that's how you learn. You become a leader, you become a grow and you get a lot of, you get a lot of money. At the end of the day, you get a lot of money. If companies see your value and you're bringing in a lot more money and you're being more productive in these corporations, they're going to pay you a shitload of money, guys. And typically this is not backdoor stuff. This is people who are close to the revenue, who are close to the customers because they are more valuable. So I, I, I say this, Trent, you know, going back to what uh, 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 you said about people in, in Reddit and so forth. Guys, it, 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 it's on you what side you want to go on. IT is a fantastic industry and you have a lot of opportunities ahead of you. Right. But choose what's your best course of action for what you want to do in yourself. Computer science is fine. IT is fine. Blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to share with you guys that that's what you can do. It's person what you can do. And there's people out there making a lot more than I am. <laughs> I see it all the time. And, 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 and so forth. I just wanted to just throw that out there, guys, that that's what's possible. And it's more. It's more. Get your education. Continue to learn. Continue to grow. Continue to gain skill sets. Become an expert in your field. Give back. You're going to make that amount of money. Easy. Yeah. Easily. Easily. Right. What, right. what else you got out here? Go ahead. Go, what, what, you guys got anything to add on that to that, uh, Jabron and, and PBO? No, I added my two cents to it, man. Like you said, the closer you get to money, you can be a pre-sales engineer that. But if you're just in the back office coding, you're going to get capped out. Even at Google, the big company, now they probably make a half million dollars, but Larry Brand now with stock options are making a billion, right? It's relative to where you at in, in the in the org chart. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And, and I say this, you are only going to get stock options if you're in a management position for the most part, unless you're working for a larger corporation, right? Where they give that to some of the top engineers, but you're still in a management, in, a, a, a management role or a leadership role in some of these companies. You talk to somebody like Chang, he tells you, you have product engineers at Google making $700,000 a year easily mm -hmm. because they get equity. Now the base salaries aren't that much, but they get equity and so forth. And that's how much they demand, how much they go for. So I wanted to throw that out there, guys. I, this has been, I wanted to cut this screen long, a, a, a longer, a little bit a, a while ago, but I, I thank you all for rocking with me. Uh, I really appreciate you guys spending a Saturday morning coffee talk with me, guys. Um, I, 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 I believe in trust and transparency and sharing knowledge and having, you know, our, 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 our big brothers and IT professors like Jabron and, and, and PBO coming over here to sharing that knowledge and answering questions and so forth. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the show today. Um, anything you want to say last minute, uh, Jabron, before we, we, we out of here? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate the platform, uh, PBO, um gay keep it techy cats like um to no longer feel so isolated as the black man in tech you know like i learned so much from you guys um and i appreciate it man it's 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 priceless it's priceless mm -hmm. i really appreciate you guys thank you so much and everybody yeah. else just keep grinding you know you see those numbers just don't think you're gonna get those numbers and not work like you're gonna mm. work for it you're, you're gonna, gonna work for it, for it. You're, you have to work for it. That's just, that's exactly what it is. We appreciate you, Jabron, man. That's uh, uh, thank you so much for coming on the channel and, and and sharing your knowledge as well too and your expertise, man. What about you, PBO? Anything for you, sir? No, just following what Jabron said. Uh, thanks for sharing the platform. Like I said, I'm 50, so I'm, my job is just give what I can to the younger generation. I, I come on here to share. Like you said, when you're the only one, sometimes you feel lonely. I definitely know what that felt like in the 80s. Like you said, it's you find so many people out here. You're just surprised that so many pe pe black dudes are out here doing it, you know, across so many genres in IT and making it happen. So um, so I'm just here to help them. Just reach out to me. Anything I can do or help you with, just let me know. And like I said, my two cents, I only got about the uh, black nurse term. I only got like 10 years left. So 
I'm trying to give what I got. <laughs> Just like Jabron said, PBO man, you gotta you gotta stop wanting that intellectual smoke, man. All the time, I can't help it, man. I got I gotta have it, man. I'm protecting the young dudes, man. I'm setting the tone for the young dudes, man. I'm trying to cut down the bush for the young guys yeah, when they come in. They be like, don't mess with that dude. He might be hanging out with PBO. We don't know. Nah. <laughs> Everybody All right, brothers. Well, weekend, we we you appreciate too. you guys. I, I, I appreciate you guys for rocking with us, and thank you so much for your time. And guys, you guys have a good rest of the weekend. I hope you enjoyed the show today. And until next time, y'all. Peace.